<laughs> hey, did you see it? It's on the screen. Say it's we live, live pal. Live now, yeah. There ain't no turning back now for sure. <laughs> no, no, absolutely no turning back. It's already started, uh, pounce man. See, we come on here laughing, expecting a good time, and we're gonna hit on a lot of stuff. Look at my dog, man. Hey, yeah, bro, let's hey, get I've it. I've been grinding, bro. I've been grinding, bro. Heavy in the weight room. I told them too, and and your boy right out here too. You be you be more than impressed. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You gotta say. Hey, I don't know now. I might yeah, see a little evidence on that, mom. Hey, I'm telling you. Now, yeah. You, you know I what, pounds? You, barbecue is. You, no. We uh. -uh. We I can't do the house, bro. The barbecue is too thick on me. That's always like that, okay? It's Tennessee. It's like that in Florida. Come on, don't act like Big Rob. Don't act like that now. I ain't going to do it. Yeah, you ain't lying, boy. We just pulled up on a food truck the other day down here. Sauce, man. Oh, yeah, we tore it up. I know you, you seen know the what? post, bro. Yeah, you I did seen see it? the post. I saw the post. You know what? Let's go ahead and start this shut up, pounds. Let's yeah, get them what yeah. they want. Yeah. You, you knew this? I was gonna look like that on that last picture. <laughs> you knew how you gonna end it like that. That thing don't look like that. Come on now. Yeah. That's, crazy. Like that. that's nice. That's nice. You see what I'm saying? Hey, and they're glad <laughs> to see you too, man. Blake saying that, man. Let's go. Here we go. Pounce, man. This is awesome. I'm going to throw some comments. Of course, we got questions. It's live. Everybody can chime in on this. But we're going to talk because they want us to always have conversations. I've been telling them for a while. Hey, I'm going to get my guy on here. Pounce is coming on. Ben is coming on. They won't pounce. They won't pounce. They won't pounce. And now you're officially here, man. So what's up Who to the people? about Ben? I, they can't pick Ben over me. <laughs> Ever pounds. Hey, I've been trying. I was, I was, I, I, I was saving this till we went live. You know, I got a little inside from Tomlin and Omar yesterday. Yeah. You, you will, you willing to drop it on there? What we got today, man? Man, I'm highly impressed. Still a nation, be highly impressed. Yeah, be highly, be highly impressed. impressed. Yeah, that's yeah. what I I'm talking about. Now, bro, but you know how I get sometimes, bro. I, I see you, and I'm like, oh, hold on now. <laughs> 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 see, see, this laugh right here is why Munch and Coach T and Kev, everybody told us, y'all don't need to talk to each other in the offseason. This is why right here. Hey, it was crazy, though. Let me go ahead and tell you. They, they called me talking about pounds. I, we've been chasing you the whole entire draft. I say, Coach, man, that, that's the problem right there. I say, you, you're trying to chase me. I say, y'all didn't know what y'all had whenever y'all drafted me, and I still laugh at the way y'all look at me, you know what I mean? But. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I know how they looked at you in the beginning. <laughs> in my younger days, for sure. <laughs> in your younger days, yeah. But yeah, they, I, I, I honestly think, bro, they did an awesome job. Obviously, in free agency, bro. But uh, man, still a nation, bro. Be be happy with the organization, bro. They they, they think outside the box for sure. And I can't they, say no that. doubt about it. Yeah. So we we are, you know, I, I have a, of course, I got a script, but screw the script, okay? We're gonna roll however the conversation flow with this, okay? I ain't, never, I ain't had a script since like middle school or something. Yeah. Stop <laughs> lying, cause we got the scripts okay. every year in the NFL. You remember they handed us the scripts, and the one time we went to the Super Bowl, you were told you weren't gonna play any. You remember that script? Uh, I don't remember that script, man. I <laughs> <laughs> you hit me either. You remember Arian Foster came out with that last well, uh, earlier this year. The NFL had scripts. No, we, I wish they did have a script. That way I'd have known a whole lot more. You feel me? Hey, you, hey for real. How Aaron Foster doing, bro? I, I, he still got the podcast? He does, man. You know what? He doing really good. You remember um, how he was post-Tennessee when he was at UT? Like, yeah. we actually got him back last year, man, to a game. And our recruiting class got together. And Arian was, like, anti-Tennessee, -U -U right? Yeah. Now he's trying to plan for this year. Hey, we got to go to a game. We're going to the spring game. Because the love yeah, that dude. you get in college, the dudes that you come in with, your yeah. recruiting class in high out of high school. Oh How epic was that, though, Pounce? I still talk to them guys all the time. It's crazy, bro. You see Amar, what I'm saying? Amar works for, for the high school. He works at Lakeland High School. He's uh, the, uh, the DB coach there. Ramey still lives in Ocala, bro. It's crazy how you're right, bro. Once you have that bond and that friendship with guys, man, you'll never ever break that. And that's why I try to tell people all the time: get outside and get into sport. Sports don't. Yeah. It's not about you becoming a, a professional athlete. It's about you having accountability, responsibility, and exercising, bro. When you you, you build in, in sports, you build the relationships that are never ever end. You can't build them in school, yeah. bro. You go to class. 
you're, you're competing against grades and math tests and things like that. But bro, sports brings diversity. You learn different cultures yeah. immediately from day one. From day one, yep. you learn diversity. And bro, it brings yep. teamwork. It build, it builds everything that you need in life. And I, and I, and I hate to say it sometimes that because I, I also feel like sport is the game. Don't get me wrong when I, when I say that stuff, but I, I do think it, 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 it teaches us as a general, as a, as a, a broad a, a people, how to be together. It does. It does, man. Uh, that's one thing I've always appreciated about it. You're going to go through ups, downs, uh, happy moments, just sad moments. You guys were with oh. me in some tragic moments, man, and I was with yeah. you also. It, it, it's well-rounded in the approach. People understand how strong you are, man, for real. Like, I tell people <laughs> yeah. that all the time, bro. You, you's a, you's a strong-minded dude, bro, for real. Good no man. doubt about Good it, man. man. He helped me out, you know, all y'all think it was me, boy. Hey, I had somebody to talk to, too, and this is the dude I leaned on. <laughs> So let's go there real quick. That rookie year, man, yours, my second year. It's funny yeah. how it all worked out. It, it really was because I was just like, all right, he went to Florida. I'm going to be real. I looked at you sideways because of that. I did. Come on. But it, we beat y'all so much. That's why. <laughs> see, see? I had to say see? it, bro. I had to. That's cool because who won last year? I ain't watched the game last year. Yeah, I was busy. Yeah, yeah. You know I retired. <laughs> Don't blame it on the kids in life. Don't do that. Absolutely not. Three, uh, three, three, um, bro. Hey, I'm busy, bro. Three, I'm busy. You, yeah. you busy man right now, 100%. So it's, it's draft different. season. Everybody got their mocks and everything going on right now, right? What was your process like as far as combine, pro day, and just the draft in general? So I was, I came out as an undergrad, as a junior. So I had to, when I went to the combine, I had to do every single test they had. I had to do every single test they had there. Yeah. So, and, and I had out of the 32 teams, I had 28 meetings. So by the time yeah. I got, you yeah, did? By the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had 28 meetings, bro, throughout the whole entire project to, uh, with, with the team. So by the time I got back to my room every night, my lineman I was with, bro, he ended up snoring, knocked out. You know me, bro. I, I'm, I'm coming from Coach Meyer and that regime. You know what I mean? I'm cutting the lights on, getting my stretch on, the shower, you know what I mean? Messing Got a routine. Up in the, hey, if you watching this, bro, my bad, bro. Hey, if you if you have a good day, bro, it ain't because of me. You know <laughs> who was it? You remember who it was? It was a the big tackle from Iowa. Balaga was the left tackle, and then the uh, the right tackle. Whoever who that right tackle was, he was a, he was a big uh, big country kid. Whoever that was, oh. man, listen. Yeah, he 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 probably ran by the five five. five. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, Either he way, did he did his thing. He, he did, did his thing. thing. Yeah. No doubt about it, but 28. But, yeah, so, so yeah, besides that part, so then, yeah, so so I get back, bro, and I'm telling everybody how crazy the experience is, and I'm telling my uh, strength coach, and I'm like, man, man, I just hope the Steelers come come, uh, come talk to me. Just come down here, come meet with me, and because uh, the, the meeting I had with them, bro, it was just so, so organic, bro, and it was just, it just made me feel yeah. like everything was right. And I'm just like, man, yeah. you know what? This might be the team. So then when they came down yeah. to Gainesville, it blew my mind away. So Coach, coach Mick College was talking about, the team that you want here, Coach right? John, I, I, John Mitchell. Uh, not, not John Mitchell. Uh, Coach Mickey Marotti. Mickey Mickey Marotti. Oh, okay, okay. With the Steelers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He with the Steelers now. You know, I'm still in college at this time. But uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, he called. I, man, bro, I'm up that thing in five minutes, bro. I'm talking about I floor it. And guess who my coach was out there? Coos, Tom, everybody, bro. So Coos. Everybody like, showed up. Yeah, bro. So Coos done put me on the board, trying to check check my knowledge. I killed. Him. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, you know I know the game now. You take me to stats too. We gotta have to take a little bit more time with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's but then he threw me on and I killed it with it. And then obviously the whole draft process came. I had Mike there with me, bro. I had so much motivation, and bro, I'm winging it, bro, because I'm leaving him behind the college. I'm just flying at the process, bro. And I, honestly, bro, it was a dream come true, bro. It, now that I sit back and try to think about it, sometimes, bro, I be forgetting so much that happened, bro, because it happened so fast. Even like now, bro, we played 11 years, and I, I, I tell people all the time. Bro, I, I probably remember a good five of them. And, and see, that's the thing, too, though. Like, I'm the same way in the sense of, like, you just kept going. Yeah. You and that's why I can tell. Like, you can recall stuff, but, like, the idea that some people, like, Munch was really good at that, though. Munch uh, would just call out plays, he never games, game, though, years. Mark. I mean, um, he never let the game. Yeah. And it was he in a different era. A, a, a player to a coach, you know what I mean? So, he, it's so he's probably like watching all that film, too. He had, bro, and you know how much was, bro. He was techniqued out, bro. He was on every single point, bro. He couldn't let the guys go in the game without giving them at least some tips on things. He was, yeah. he was, he was, he was an addict about that stuff. Yes, he was. So draft night, though, man. How was that? <laughs> you were in Lakeland. You didn't go to the, uh, you didn't go to the draft, though, did you? It nah, was, it was in Lakeland. 
around they family. Get the invite, bro. They, 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 they yeah, right. Yeah, they, I didn't get the invite, bro. It was crazy. Yeah. Are, are you? Did you feel slighted? No, heck, heck, no, bro. Heck, no, heck, no. Because maybe I, I don't know if I, maybe I, maybe I turned it down, but I didn't feel like I didn't know. You know what I mean? I was so, bro. I'm playing line, bro. I'm playing O line. You know what I mean? For me, in my mind, yeah. I didn't think I was gonna go first round or to think I was gonna go that high, bro. I, I'm telling you, man. Y'all think I'd be playing about this sometime? Like, bro, I was just living in the moment. I didn't know anything. I didn't yeah. know any better. You know what I'm saying? So whenever it happened, it happened so quick. And I, in my mind, I more wanted everyone at my uh, for where I'm from to be at the house anyways. You know what I mean? Like all yeah. y'all come here. So whenever the following year came, we was like, all right, man. You know what? Mike's going there. Like, let's go out to New York. And actually, it was a cool, cool experience. You know what I mean? So I can't remember now, honestly, bro. Not that you say that, but I just let me go ahead and quote it and say, man. You know what? They ain't invite me. And you they know didn't I'm invite you. There it is. Yeah, I'm going to hold it against them. Yeah, yeah, they owe me. But because you had a first round grade, though, I'm sure, and it's still just the idea that they wouldn't. I mean, either way, you know what, Pounce? If they got they a rebuttal for this. Round like that, though, bro. They just really wasn't back then. Centers. I mean, so if you, if, yeah, if you look at the draft, like, centers really wasn't like a first round pick back then. Maybe one guy, you know what I'm saying? So, and we yeah. had some other good guys come out my year, too. So it, it, was, a, it was a competitive thing as well. But I'm, I, I lived in the moment, bro. I'll tell you, I, I, I was so thankful and blessed, bro, that. Even playing little league football, high school football, college, bro, we, we had a lot of great teams, a lot of great teammates, and a, a lot of great coaches, bro. So I tell people all the time, man, I hear them crazy stories and all the, you know, the the, the things that you don't want to hear about football, but I, I I didn't really ever ever experience that, you know. So maybe maybe it was just the uh, the coach did a good job of recruiting, man. All that so I tell people all the time, like a lot of hard work comes into it, but bro, the air you play in, the luck that comes with it, the teammates yep. you have, like. All that stuff plays one big part. And if people think if something totally different, it's just about one person, they're crazy. So that's that's another interesting thing, too, because I'm sure you have parents ask you, too, and parents ask me. Like, you played football since you were, like, five years old. I didn't play till I was in the seventh grade. The path to get there, it really ain't a real answer to it, though, is it? No, nah, bro, it's not, bro. I'm telling you, man, bro, so many athletes, man. Just imagine, like, man, you get an injury, then the next guy's up, or... You're at a high school that doesn't get a lot of exposure, and the other team that's going to three takes championships get a lot of exposure every single year. So the coaches get to see them more. They're drawn to the film. Uh, some players go do the camps ever since they're kids. So the Nikes already know them. The rate the people who rate them, yep. uh, the, all that they already more like uh, uh, comfortable with putting them in a position. You know what I mean? So I tell people all the time, bro, if you're going to be in the sports, make sure you're out there doing it from a young age. I know you you was a lot different, Mo. You're in Tennessee, and look at you, bro. Your size. Yeah. So you you can't sure. go buy that at Costco's. At Walmart, the mall, nowhere, you know what I mean? Like, you just can't do it. You can't You can't teach what you have, you know what I mean? So if you're going to no play, start young enough unless you're Ramon Foster. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go deflecting. There yeah, you go bro, deflecting. You had some brothers, too, you were chasing, bro. You had some brothers yeah. who played professionally, like, so you know what I mean? It wasn't just you either, though, you know what I mean? So It wasn't, it wasn't. It was, it's, it's always like that, too. So yeah. you get the call, my guy, and you come in a situation, still is the two years away from winning the Super Bowl. Uh, didn't make the playoffs the year before. You know Pittsburgh. At least I learned when I was there too. The the center position in Pittsburgh is legendary. Oh, yeah. did you know, you know that? You the, I didn't, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Mom, I'm from Lakeland, Florida, bro. We had blacked out games. I but my yeah. first Steeler game really watching, bro, was when we played the Arizona Cardinals in that in that Super Bowl. And it was crazy, really? bro. Because I was in co- yeah, when I was in college when I was watching them like that, bro. We always watched like the the, the Bucks, the Jags, the Dolphins. Yeah, bro. We had we had a regular cable, bro. You ain't watching no outside games like that unless they come down here and play. And then, bro, you it know, wasn't no Sunday ticket. Yeah, yeah, bro. And then the Steelers really didn't play like the the, the Bucks like that. You know what I mean? That was our team. But um, the, 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 what you were saying, Mo? My bad. Bro. I was just I gonna say, out. with 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 the center, you being drafted as a Steeler at the center. Like, did you have a conversation with somebody? And this is the other thing too. No. There was I, also a Super Bowl winning center in the room at the time too. I heart with you. You, you, you want to go there for a little bit because yeah, because I, it, it it was such a weird thing, bro. Because I was such a player that I always heck yeah, I had tough love on everybody. Trust me, I was. I was one of the yeah. players. Like I, I, I had a lot of. I put a lot of kind of build on players. But I was also the player that taught everybody everything that I knew. And I, yeah. and I expect them to, 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 to either try or at least, you know what I mean, take some of the coaching points from it, you know what I mean? And I think that whenever I went there and I, and I, and I tried to learn from him, he was so standoffish about it, bro. And it kind of just like, like just rubbed me the wrong, wrong way a little bit. But I did. You know how I am, bro. I'm such a big hearted dude, you know what I mean? Whenever the thing did kind of like uh, end up playing out how it played out, I sat back and I, bro, I felt bad for him because he came up to me um, before. We, I know we played the Denver Broncos in our fourth game. Or in our third game, that's the game yeah. I ended up starting. And uh, he came up to me, he was like, man, Pounce, like, I see it now. I just want to be here. 
like just be here, you know, coach, be around football a little bit more and coaching. I'm just like in my head, I just like, bro, I, I get it too. You know what I mean? As an older player, like I, I understand it. You know what I mean? Like, man, you're sitting there, you know, had a lot of success. You're in your, what was he, 12 or 13, year 12 or 13. And then they just draft the first Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, just come yeah. off the of Super Bowl. He had, he had a, it wasn't like he was a bad player. You know what I mean? Hartwig was, was a good player. <clears throat> so for that to happen, bro, I mean, there's a lot of pride that comes with it. You know what I mean? And, Obviously, I'm young and wild and playing music, going crazy, jumping around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I remember it, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You, you know how awkward it was, too, Mo. So it, it, just like meetings and stuff, like the laughing and stuff, it was like, all right, well, you know what I mean? And then whenever the, 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 the roll-off happened, it, that, just imagine how it was at practice. You know what I mean? No one was really talking. So it was kind of like a weird process. But as I went through it, bro, I kind of like I understood both sides of it, bro. And I can I, – I, and, I, and, and now it's looking back on, there's no hard feelings at all, bro, because I was an older player too, bro. Trust me, when I got older, yeah. I wasn't the same player, bro. No matter how much in your mind you want to sit there and tell yourself, man, I'm in year five, I'm out here tearing it up. Bro, you, I mean, right. you're out there, you know, you know the game a lot differently. You know what I mean? You're, you, you, you're positioning yourself there. You think about it differently. You know what I mean? Maybe on this back block, you're not going to kill him as hard because you understand that, man, the ball's going to get outside. You know what I mean? Yeah, for Different sure. I remember like that, that whole... I, I think as we grew, that's what, what happened with me. You know what I mean? It was, and and you're exactly right. And I say this too: our group was more of let me help the guys behind me, because at any point in time we could be out. And the one thing that we had at, at a, after we got established was if you're gonna play with us, you better play like us too. For sure, a lot of accountability, bro. And our guys, bro, we made sure they worked out all the time. Like, bro, it wasn't no missing no stuff, bro. We 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 had a lot of accountability on that stuff, bro. Even the Thursday meetings, I know that some as we got older, some people might have looked at it a little bit differently, bro. But it. That hour or two we spend together, bro, is, is unreplaceable. You can't get that at the facility. You can't get that any nope. other where, where you're just locking yourself in with your boys and they're talking about the craziest things in the world. So that let, let me let me tell it how I saw it that year, okay? Your rookie year coming <laughs> oh. in. <clears throat> One, I'm young. I'm still, I'm I'm still like in the undrafted phase of just thinking, like I'm in survival mode. You know what I'm saying? I was always like that too. And I'll never forget, uh, I think Coogs had just, did Coogs just come in? Yeah, because yeah, Z had year, just got let yeah, go. Z, I, I you came in. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have Z. So what I remember from that year, you getting drafted was, one, we became tight from the moment. I think that was a little bit of you having a twin, always having somebody around you. Plus, we were just cool. I don't know. How much so, it was just so, so, so unique, bro, so genuine. Like, it was crazy. And bro. organic. I, that's what it was, bro. Because we had some other. I had Max in the room. Remember, he was at Florida. Like I had some he was other guys that were. I, I knew a little bit closer, but me and you, bro, it was just that that bond. That, bro, you, it's you, bro. Like, bro, you, 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 you. you, you I hate to say it, like you're comfortable with beer. I know the people that you don't work with on the podcast and, and, and on all the shows you've been around. Like, bro, you're very comfortable to be with, very comfortable to talk with people. You're very approachable, even though you're a, a damn giant. You're approachable, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, with that being said, I knew this though. I knew it was gonna get funny in the room in some capacity. All I was saying, boy, I gotta make sure it ain't me. Okay, but <laughs> <I> went, <laughs> no lie, because Coogs was new. I had yeah. started four games a year before. They had like it was a veteran group inside that room. Yeah. Willie, Max, Trey, Trey Juice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, just think about Par uh, Parquet was in there. You remember him being in there? Yeah, Capizzi was around. All of them, like it was an older group. Craig Urbic was in there. Yeah, Urbic. Oh man, you remember that? So let me go. Let me tell your side of this thing though, because uh, uh, that's right, another right. story. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. So, yeah. so we we were you come up finally for OTAs? I think right. Yeah, and I think yeah. everybody was there. Coogs walks in the room and he says this. I don't even, I've told this story before, but I need you to confirm that this is true. He walks in, he's like, man, I love where we are. You guys are, you're here. You're, you're killing it. You're doing real good. We're, we're mm -hmm. showing our presence right. out on the football right, field. Yep. He said, well, Marquise, he right here. And y'all better catch up to what he got going on. And at that point, like, there's two things that can happen. You can run with it or run away from it. And at that point, I was like, let's go. And I think that was the, the switch that you talk about, maybe with Hartwig, that was just like, oh, so what the hell am I here for? You know what I'm saying? Like, when that, he that said is, that, I was story, like, bro, But trust me how awkward I had to feel in there. I know you had to feel awkward. Like, Man, but there, was it was it a lie? No. Nah, uh, no, nah, it wasn't. You see we what I'm saying? Like, we, I, I, we came from SEC football, bro, and we had a, a chip on it. Bro, I ain't a lot. You said it already, like, from day one, bro, you always had a chip on your shoulder. It wasn't as, as like a uh, like a like a nasty chip, like you hated people, but bro, you always thought that someone was coming in there to take your position, and you yep. lived like that on a day to day basis, working out, 
uh, game day. Like you, you took a lot of pride in that thing. Like people don't know that you broke down the team in the locker room. Like, man, you was like the voice a lot of times. You know what I mean? I know I was the one sometimes to come out in the media and say my two cents, you know, get ready to put on my boxing gloves. But bro, you were some, somewhat of the voice of the whole entire locker room. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. But, 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 but it's, it's funny because we're, we're in this transition of watching this new group kind of come together. Chooks is still there. We both played yeah, with yeah. him. I like it too. Uh, Chooks is good. But And then I think a lot of people look at IOL because of the way we were kind of built up. We were all homegrown. We were all young. We grew up together, whether it was Mike Adams was there, Gil there, uh, Al. I mean, think about what we <laughs> beach, what we had to go through to get yeah, to that beach, point. It was – yeah, no, for real, crazy, man. But, like, watching us kind of come together, I think you you kind of set that tone or you reset the room and the idea that if we're going to be good and we're going to be dominant, like, it was cool to be an OL. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And everybody kind of embraced that, too. Like, what? where did that come from? That was the questions I saw somebody ask, too. Like, where did that come from as far as nobody, ca nobody cares about us other than, look, don't get holding calls, don't give up sacks, and we only get stacks as far as starts. You feel no, me? I honestly, I honestly think that came from us making the O line position cool. Like I think most of the yeah. time people look at offensive linemen like, bro, I, I, I go places sometimes. They're like, man, it's crazy. When you when y'all used to play, all I did was watch the offensive line. I never watched yeah. the receiver catch the ball. I didn't watch the quarterback throw it because, bro, we, we made it cool to be out there. Like we we talked trash. Like we we were cool with things. We hung out with people. Like we weren't just the linemen just eating uh, uh, pork chop sandwiches and, and, and <laughs> hanging out the house all day. You know what I mean? Like we actually yeah. got involved in the community. We actually, you did the, the radio show a long time. You know what I mean? Yep. You drew a lot of attention to the line. Like most guys steer away from that stuff. You know what I mean? Most guys, either the quarterback, the receivers or the defensive back players do that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Alignment to do the things that you did. Obviously all of us in the community and, uh, and the, the success we have, bro. Like we had some great running backs and we had a great receivers. We, we had multiple years where we went shit, uh, top three in sacks. You know what I mean? So that, that alone, right put up in a whole different bracket of offensive linemen in the league. So I just think, bro, that, and, and then obviously we're playing for Coach Tomlin, bro. Let's be real. We're in Pittsburgh, one of the, I mean, the top organization in all of football, bro. So a, a lot of right. that stuff, uh, a lot of the accolades play with that stuff as well because I've seen the other side of it with Mike, you know what I mean? Him playing down yeah. the Dolphins, them uh, playing every single game at 1 o'clock, bro. Our games are at 8.30 at night, you know what I mean? We're playing at prime yeah. time games, and then we're out there having 150-yard uh, rushes and no sacks. Something got to be showed, you know what I mean? So all that played a major factor into it, bro. So I and, and we were blessed, bro. We were cool as hell, bro. We had personality, bro. A lot of them don't have personality. We have personality. Personality, bro. A lot of that stuff, we, we feel like we, we took pride in the dressing for the plane. Most linemen throw on 4X shirts and, and baggy pants. Like, bro, we, we came clean, you know what I mean? Like, we had, we had a standard <laughs> we that did. we set. Yeah, we did, and that's that's why I was gonna go next with you, man. The standard aspect of it, Coach T mm -hmm. use that catchphrase all the time. You call it cliche. It we used he to, that, I, and I love I it. That's the only one he used. The standard is the, the standard. The standard is the standard. And 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 with that though, I think a lot of people we've had conversation on here before too. Um, with me and DK, some people view Coach T a certain way. Some people like him. Some people don't like him. Even uh, uh, what's his Bradshaw has kind of said something too, right? The idea <laughs> of of change. Oh, like it's getting stale. Yeah, where are you, know, you know, with, with Coach, Coach Tomlin? Whatever. Yeah. Bro. So so where are we at with Coach Tomlin, man? Like I, every person I've had on has pretty much <laughs> said the same sentiment. It ain't just necessarily. Go I will ahead. tell people, bro, and I'll tell people this all the time, bro. You don't truly know what you have until it's gone. And the moment Coach Tomlin walks out of the organization of the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm telling you right now, if y'all don't have the best team, the team will not be good. You have to have an yeah. organization put in place with coaching staff and that history. Unless they hire one of the best coaches in football, Mo, you know how it goes, bro, when new coaches roll in, bro. They got a whole different yeah. mentality. Like in Pittsburgh, I will say maybe Pittsburgh might be unique and lucky because they didn't. They have been the one organization to be able to pick a coach and stick with them that, that and, and ride some of that, them, them things out, them ups and downs, them lows. But bro, whenever you have a coach that has 16 years of playoffs, and then you're gonna and then and then he's to walk away from football and then someone else to come behind him, like <laughs> unless yeah. you go win two bowl, two bowl, two bowl, two bowl, like <laughs> you're gonna be chasing yeah. up a mountain a long time, you know what I mean? So you, whoever comes in that seat next, man, enjoy the ride too. But man, I don't see Coach Tomlin leaving for a while, bro. Like, hell, look at look at the success that man has. Like, just to draw the team. Uh, and if people don't see how great of a coach he is and how much of a leader of a man he is, to go through the last couple of years alone just sets set sail for everything we're saying. 
It just, yeah. just like you don't have you don't have to you don't have to sit here and debate and argue about these things. Just go cut on the film, watch his teams, watch the preparation, watch watch how he, he organizes things whenever uh mm -hmm. when trouble does come. He, man, he hits it right in the face. He's spot on with it. He don't run from things, he don't hide from things. He's very straightforward and honest with players and people, bro. And that's what you can respect about it. Because some players and coaches are liars. Yeah. And we've been all been around yes. it, bro. Yeah. So and, and I'm telling you right now. So the moment you experience the other side of it, bro, you the ones that you do appreciate and the ones you do respect, you'll never ever forget them. And, and that's where I was too with them, man. Like one, the message from inside of the locker room, outside the locker room has never changed. Yeah. Everybody's on the same page. I don't know if you call it us drinking the Kool-Aid when it comes down to how he can convince you to do stuff. <laughs> I tell people he a nerd with how he gets you going. Like for real. It is it's really That's hilarious what, how bro, he used to text me crazy, crazy shit, bro. I mean, crazy stuff. Uh pounds, you know Cleveland just drafted that nose guard for you. Man, had me mad all off season. Just 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 pissed off for no reason. Every time they see me, yeah, they, they, they got him just for you. He's gonna tell your ass up all game. You know, yeah. you know how he is, man. Like who, who was that? That was the guy from uh Baylor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh my Phil, Phil like, Taylor. Nah, Phil Vic Taylor was Phil. not there. He was another one. Remember, that's who Randy used to talk about. And uh and uh 71 was uh oh my god, uh uh Atwan, uh, uh you know, he, he uh, had a crazy uh, name. The, he, uh, really crazy name, but he was awesome. I, Antibia, I, I, I Antibia. Yeah, something crazy. At the moment. We probably saying it wrong. Hey, but hey, Don, yeah. listen. I know we saying your name wrong, but you was a hell of a player. Real talk. It's respect. One hundred percent respect. One hundred percent respect. <laughs> he was, he was that one, man. I liked him, but yeah, Coach Tomlin, bro. He, he knew how to play the mind game of players. You know what I mean? And I think uh, he held a lot of guys uh, accountable. So even when we went to the Monday meetings, man, remember that he used to call Ruben. Out. Ruben. Yeah. That's who it was. Ruben and Tebow. Yeah, I'll I'll call Ruben, Ruben, yes, yeah, that's yeah. who that was. See, hey, look, bro. Hey, you know, you know, yeah, but, hey, bro, you know what it was, too, though, for real. For real. He, yeah. he did, he yeah. did. Let me get back um, and think about what I'll take because I almost just went off topic, man. You almost had me, yeah, but uh, because he used to I, bring I, it, yeah, yeah, bro. I just went off topic, man. I completely now you almost got me hot over here, bro. Talking about them Cleveland Brown, them dogs, bro. I like, used to tear them yeah. dogs up, man. I know they're gonna yes, clip, tear them up. I, to, oh, there we go, man. <laughs> go ahead. I mean, um, Dolly wanted that, bro. Yeah, I had to do that for her. She did. <laughs> she did. With that, with that being said, though, the 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 mental side of what what he did and how he went about it inside of our our building, the way he used to pit us against the defensive line, to where when oh, we oh. were like walking through the hallways, like really on it, how he used to just let Cam know, get your little pups together. The big boys coming out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he used to piss Cam off, bro. He used to piss him. But Coach Tomlin, bro, he's the ultimate competitor, bro. He knows how to put players in the right position, have them thinking about things throughout the day, pushing them in different ways that other coaches just don't do. They walk right past you, might not say nothing to you, might say something to the star quarterback. But, hell, Coach Tomlin talked to everybody in the building, knew everybody in the building. And, bro, he wouldn't care if he was a, a all-pro, a pro bowler, or a free agent, or a, a, a practice squad guy. He treated everybody the same. Go out there and work for your spot. 100%, man. Pounce, this is something the folks have always asked. I take that back. I take that back, man. Who? You know, Who? Ben, my dog Ben get treated with royalty, bro, and I, and I stand on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Pounce, that is – what what did they tell us one time? Like, at the top of the organization, it's the quarterback, though. Let's be real about it. When you got him. This, this Tomlin rocked his purple in their room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, they, and it's them. depending on the day. <laughs> Depending on the day and the opportunities. Right, yeah, we can rotate them. Yeah, we, yeah, well, you know Coach Tyler put his foot down now. <laughs> That's true, too. Yeah. I always tell people, he the uncle you don't want to piss off. He, sure. You can go to the house. Them, eyes going to open and wide open, man. God, you start sweating. You're like, man, what the hell? I'm like, why don't they? <laughs> I'll never forget. He got, uh, he got us all at a few point in times, man. Uh, one, while we're talking about the game real quick, the, the tap. That we always did on, on roll yeah, games. That's legendary. Well, I know. They said, you you see? That. They said Ramon Foster did that just to get on TV, y'all. So he stood up <laughs> tall every time. And he said, man, everybody got to see 73. They got to buy the jersey. <laughs> hey, I didn't make a Pro Bowl. I had to get seen somewhere. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, I hate to say it, but Dave, you, you know you shouldn't have went that year. Ramon was first off to hey, We'll, we'll, we'll let it ride. We'll get... I, I don't call him you... out in person. It's okay. Okay. I was you, first you, alternate you, one year, but that's neither here nor there, man. Yeah. You you was you was rooting for your guy, though, man. Uh, um, <laughs> you know he had to walk out in there. I, they had to hold hands together. They did, of course. <laughs> that's his boot thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that being said, though, the tap, it, it was so – were you shocked that nobody really could catch it? 
It was crazy, bro. I, I didn't understand how people wouldn't jump it all the time. It, it, it blew it, my mind. Maybe because I mean, maybe I mean it was very, very often that we went on one. It's kind of like bro, like, we're go on two head bobs every time. Like, bro, you should easily be back there jumping the snap. But we did but a good see, job of routine. That, we we did a good job of snapping it early too. You know what I mean? I, I'm telling you right now, Mo. As soon as I felt that touch, that I didn't care if my head was up or not, the ball was going back. <laughs> the ball was coming I back. My guys got to jump. <laughs> and, and see, that was our cohesion too. And what I didn't know, Gil told me later. Like, I'm tall. I'm six six, right? Gil used to see me go up and come down. He wouldn't look at you. He would look at me go down and know when that. to go. I didn't even think about that. that yeah, that's what yeah, was bro, so you, interesting you know about. You like getting your three-point stance. Let's be real. Pounce, I hated the three-point after. Yeah, I felt man, more you know, comfortable much, up. Much to eat you up about that, bro. You used to be mad. Man, <laughs> why I got to go down in the stands, Pounce? You feel me? Coach, I'm Am I getting the job him? done or not? Yeah. <laughs> And I was for real, bro. Okay, you too, bro. Yeah. For real, for but, real. but you you remember when that first started doing that though? Was it uh Cougs that had us switch over to that because it was Cincinnati with the double barrel? Yes, they would put a and linebacker in both the gaps. Were more, the tight ends were more complaining too, so I think that did a better job of uh, helping them guys out when you did when you took full control of it. You know what I mean? Because me yeah. just doing the head bob, you're probably right. Them seeing the motion of you going up and down as well, it probably yeah. helped them out tremendously. Yeah, no doubt about it. But I'll never forget it was it was Cincy that used to you point out the, the linebackers and they would just flip or they would drop yeah. and move around. Did you did it bother you as much when they did that type of stuff? More mentally, because man, I more thought about what the running back was gonna do. Like I didn't want the running back to mess up because it's too hard yeah. to repoint once this is a, you're away game, you're on silent, it's too hard to yell back. Your running back had to be on point, bro. We got very, very blessed with the running backs we had. Le'Veon was a hell of a blocker, bro. Yes, he was. Right, right. And took Connor, pride in it, Connor too. was a hell of a blocker, you know what I mean? We had some running backs, bro. Them boys, like, they took pride in that stuff. They wanted to know where the point was so they could be on top of their stuff. So I had to give hands up to Connor and Le'Veon, bro. Them boys were on that stuff, for sure. They, they really were, man. I just thought it was always unique because people always ask about it. I'm like, man, it was just the rhythm of it more than anything. And, of course, like I said, with them switching sides and when Gil told me that he would – uh, he, 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 he took his stance off of mine or he went when I went down – I was like, you never told me this. This is a very u unique situation. No, how crazy was it when Finney went over there? Remember, he even tapped me on the uh, – that's what I'm saying. Like, people don't know, like, man, that's not an easy thing to do. When you're sitting no. there, you're worried about the guy you got to block, the play we're running, and, man, what for audible happens, and you got to tap, turn around, look and see when the quarterback's lifting his leg, tap, and go back to it, bro. And, and Finney had little shorter arms, you know what I mean? So, depending on the play, <laughs> he didn't get it covered. <laughs> and, and Dave wasn't going to do it. <laughs> what? Dave wasn't going to tap. <laughs> Dave wasn't doing a lot of things, bro. You know, Dave, Dave was stuck <laughs> in his ways, bro, for sure. Yes, he was. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting you say that about uh, Hartwig, too. Like, you pretty much, you chased him out. I ain't going to lie. When Dave came in, that was probably the first time in my career I was like, oh, hell, here we go. You know what I'm saying? You, it was. Yeah, you, I, and I told you, too, I knew it. I knew it wasn't going to happen, brother. Team, coach, yeah. bro. Yeah. Coach Tyler had way too much respect for you, man. You worked way too hard. Yeah, yeah Coach Tyler puts uh, – uh, 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 heavy pads on everybody's shoulders, but let's be serious. Like he wants you to go out. Yeah, he does. There. So he's gonna challenge you in that way. He's gonna, he's gonna make you feel like you like you're not a great player. Like let's be real. I mean, he's sitting there telling you a great player every day. Like you'll never you'll never ever go touch. You'll top, slack top, up. Top. Yeah, you'll never touch it, bro. One hundred percent. And and I think that's what they're doing right now with this O line that they got. Like they went and got Isaac Somalo from uh yeah, from, from the, uh, the Eagles. Eagles. Yeah, I like him. He's he a good player. He played nasty too. I like that. He does play nasty, and and that's what I'm looking at. One, you got to have depth, but two, you need to challenge guys. So a guy like Kevin Dotson in that position right now, I'm thinking to myself, one, they did give Isaac some starter money. Let's be real about that. Now, it's two things that can happen because I've been in that situation before. You can either fight or you can run. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how this group shake up because uh, whether it be up to them or or not, like they're oh, going to be judged according to how we were. Was that a political No, answer? it ain't no political answer. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is this. Isaac is, is probably going to be the starter at left guard. Don't, don't probably all things, <laughs> Isaac is Go ahead. I'm, take the floor. Isaac What's that? is going in at the start, bro. Players don't sign a free agency, bro, and sign that type of money to come sit on the bench. Like, let's be serious. Like, bro, we know how the NFL works. Now, yeah. Dotson can go out there and out because Coach Tomlin is the one, probably the one coach that's going to give players opportunity to start over the money. Let's be serious. Right. 100%. Like most coaches, like most coaches, they sign a guy in free agency, bro. It's a lot of pride and arrogance to that stuff. You know what I mean? They got to make sure that guy's on the field. You know what I mean? Coach Tom is going to, I'm telling y'all, he don't care about that. If a guy's undrafted and he plays better than that first round, that, that undrafted guy's going to play. 
Yeah, not a genius. No doubt like about Kev, Kev, Kev might say something. <laughs> Omar now. <laughs> Omar now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking about back in the woods there, but yeah. Oh, Omar, back yeah. in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Omar know the routine. Hell, come on, man. So with that being said, what did you think of Omar getting a job? I know you're a friend of I him. I am too. I and and why? I, I thought Omar is, I think, oh, I think the best Omar. I think Omar does his due diligence on things. I think Omar is going to be a hell of a GM. And he's going to be with the Pittsburgh Steelers a very long time. We got lucky that Omar didn't leave us to go to another team. Because he had those opportunities. Yeah, heck yeah, he did, bro. And, I, and luckily, some of the coaching stuff, the, other, the guys they wanted to hire, it didn't work out with him in his favor, so. Man, we, the, the the organization got blessed for him to stay, bro. I'm, I'm pretty sure Mr. Rooney was real happy about that, too. You know I mean? <laughs> yes, he was. Yes, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was. So one thing that's always been highly documented, you and Ben's relationship. What yeah. was that like from your words? You know what I'm saying? How did y'all kind of blossom yeah. that relationship? Because it, it was dope. And, and then and he I'm had right. that with yeah. all of us, but you you and his was, was very particular, man, in a good way. Yeah, and I, bro, I always tell people, bro, it's the weirdest thing ever, bro, because, bro, we grew up totally different, two different walls of life, like, even, like, like, uh, like how we hang out in, 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 in our off the football life, you hear what I'm saying? So, when, yeah. like, whenever we were hanging out together, bro, how junior and, and, and unique you things was, it was, like, crazy, like, how, how we could just hang out for all night long, and we, we, right. you, yeah, and Mo, you know, like, big, big business, a big country boy, like, yeah. To himself a lot of the times, you know what I mean? So, and as we got there, he was older as well. Been through some of the stuff he was went through. So for him to take me in and as wild as I was and kind of like teach me the ropes, I think it was more because maybe he had hiccups on the way. And he caught, he probably yeah. seen that in me as well. Like, man, Pounds, look, you know what? Let me, let me, let me help guide this guy in a way that I wasn't guided. I'm assuming, you know what I mean? Cause that's, that, that's kind of, kind of felt like to me, you know what I mean? He was always there when I, when I needed him. I mean, he always told me some of the things that I needed to hear, you know what I mean? Like, as much as I didn't want to hear, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's better for a guy like him to tell it to you, you know what I mean? So yeah. I always thank Big Ben for that. You know I mean, I, I tell people we grew in that, that fashion. That I think that maybe for him going through what he went through, he kind of like helped me out because I, I think he probably seen how quick it could happen for me as well, you know what I mean? You know what's crazy too? Let me brag a little bit. Uh, I was just thinking to myself, Pounce had to tie me by getting 11 years with Ben, huh? I was just like you. I was gonna be the longest blocking lineman for him, and now here you are, just tied up. And I was like, you just had to do one more year, didn't you? Come on. And I'm telling you right now, I crawled through that year, bro. I was so hurt. Like, you did. Ah, come here. You did. <laughs> so, yeah, so bro. answer me this, because we never talked about this, man. What, what was that last year for you like? Because I had you all but one. You had me all but one too. And it was it different. It was unbelievably hard. Unbelievably hard because, you know, as you get older, bro, you're so stuck in your way sometimes, bro. So we yeah. went from being how we were to testing. Weight to room. Our iPads. Yeah, not being a, be around the guys, bro. And I'm a people's person, bro. Like, I got to be around people. I'm going to go crazy a little bit. Like, I got to be able to, like, man, talk to people and interact with my people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what I mean? And I couldn't do that. They took it from me. And then there was so many yeah. different rules, bro. And then it just, like, and I wasn't the same player. As much as I want to sit there and t t say it all the time, like. You I, knew you it? Know, Bro, I just felt that man. Like, man, you knew that, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, I knew man, my bro. last year too. Yeah, it's just like, bro. Like, man, some of them blocks where you'd be like, man, man, I threw him, I threw him down on the damn ground. Like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, and then yeah, bro. And it's just like, bro, a lot, so much was going on, bro. It's just like, man. And I hate to say it, bro, because I trust me, bro. You know, I'm a warrior, bro. Like, I, yeah. I just didn't have no more fight in me, bro. They hit, they hit the Achilles. You know what I mean? They, it went right through it. Bah, uh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So when it had, yeah, when it happened, bro, that the, the thing that made me made it so good and made me feel comfortable about it, bro, because, bro, I'm, I got pride too, bro. So when I had to call Mr. Rooney, they like, I was, bro, I sat there and like, I, 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 I sat there and like, we're gonna act like I'm gonna call him for like hours. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, no, nah, I'm gonna do it a little later. And when I finally yeah. did it, bro, I kind of like just told him where I was at with it and told him where my head was. Like, man, like your soldier's down. Like, I, I just can't, I can't do it no more. And I just want to, yeah, just call you out of respect. And bro, once he. Once he was like, "Man, pounce," I understand it, and I and I'm not and I'm not gonna say anything to try to change your mind because I know how you are, bro. I just I, it immediately hit me like, "Man, thank you." Because if you would have said anything, Mo, like, I try to go against what I said, man, I'd be like, "Man, Mr. Rooney, you're right. I'm coming back. I got you." For just like that, and I did we talk about this or did you say it somewhere else? But you was like, you knew you couldn't talk to Ben. Heck yeah, bro! Like, I knew I couldn't, bro. Like, bro, and I, cause, because, bro, because you know how close we were, bro, and we still are. Yeah. So he would have said some things to me, bro. That would have been like, man, you know what? All right, now I can't talk to Mr. Rooney because maybe he already said something to him, or man, he put this in my head now. You know what I mean? So he was the last person I called, bro, and I felt like shit about it because 
man, Ben was hitting me up like, what do you think? You know what I mean? Or where are you at with it, pal? Man, one more time for the fans. Like, you, you know that right. you know that, that they need you, you know what I mean? And he was saying all this crazy, and I'm, I felt them, you know what I mean? But, bro, and I, I just couldn't do it, man. My body was so yeah. hurt and so tore down, bro. And then plus, I lost Mike, too, bro. Mike just went through uh, the year before he went through the neck surgery, right? So he shows up yep. to the damn house, my house, and his neck, bro. Y'all seen him? Bro, he's, I saw he's, him, yeah. Here. I'm, I'm, in my head, I'm just like... All right, he's 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 testing. Like, this is the test moment right here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> does he not want me to go out there and cut block this week? Or what is he trying to tell me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, nah, you know me, bro. I, I, I be joking yep. about that. But then, so then the following year, he has the whole entire hip replacement, and I'm just like, God, dog, Mike, like, bro, you back to back with it. You know what I mean? So then, once that happened, I'm thinking about like, bro, my body's feeling like crap. I don't have my workout partner. You know what I mean? Like, yep. a lot of things. The into building me. was different. You. The, the one of the other biggest things was my my kid Jada. You you know Jada, bro. She was there at every yep. single home game. You know I mean, she got to the point, bro, where uh uh she was she's old enough now to where like on the weekends and stuff, like bro, her friends went there. They got they got class assignments and things like that, bro. And it was just it just ate me up that that she was questioning, uh, or she felt like 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 I, she had to be there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like I can't I can't do that to her. You know what I'm saying? I don't have all this assessed, bro. I'm, I'm I'm 11 years in, like bro, like. I had to save well, like the team success, like, and then plus, bro, you, you you start looking at things sometimes, you're like, you're looking down the line just a little bit, like, all right, do we have a real, real legit chance to go to the Super Bowl? If that's one of the real reasons that we have that legit chance, I promise you I'm coming back. And I just didn't know back. if we had, yeah, I, I just did I know we had a chance to be in the playoffs. Yeah. But to, to have that feeling to where you have uh, uh, Le'Veon on the team, uh, Connor, uh, AB, uh, Antonio Brown, like, bro, when you got that, that type of, like, bro, it's, it's common sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's where I was, too. Like, <laughs> you got to be real with yourself in the game. You got to have, like, real understanding about, like, okay, if I saved up, if I'm healthy enough, if I got mm -hmm. a lot to live for, then why? And a lot of people <laughs> can't understand that. And, and then it's the last part, though, too, though, Pounds. Like, that was a part of it that got me to, like, okay, do I fight for another or what? Because I'm, like, the opportunity to play and win in the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that is, if everything else is settled, the money, the good times, the friends, the relationship, family's good, the Super Bowl opportunity in your older years, in your mm -hmm. older years, it's different when we were in year one, two, oh, to five, come on. right? Come on. Way yeah, different you got, you got Yeah, you're chasing them contracts. You chase the contracts, being completely honest about that. But I looked at mine at the end of 19, and I never get, I, I, uh, I hugged Al. And, I was, and we were in Baltimore losing. I was just like, dog. I knew, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know when the call was coming or when we were going to talk about it, but I knew, and that's where you were. And Mo, you know the craziest part? Al called me after that, too. And he, I asked him, I said, man, what is it? He said, man, Mo's done. I said, man, hell no. Did he? Ain't no way. Yeah, heck yeah, bro. Because when you had that conversation with somebody on the sideline, come on, bro. Yeah. I Let's just didn't like, know. We, he... we, we, were, we were like this, you know what I mean? Like, all of us. Yeah, I know. Saying, that's why it was just crazy, yeah. bro. And I, you know what I mean? Like, bro, then you wasn't there, like, bro, just... Just imagine being so comfortable with someone being there all throughout the years. Like, bro, our position is unique, bro. You got to have a real yeah. group to be there on a day-to-day -day basis, bro, because you, bro, we're warriors, bro. Every single day we're hitting people in the past. Like, man, we're, yeah. we're out there wrestling, tussling with grown men. Like, bro, like, we ain't out there just catching passes, pointing to the, the stands and getting everybody to cheer for us. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that ain't how it works for us. You know what I mean? So yeah. a lot comes into that, bro. As a lineman, you got to be a leader. Is You know what I mean? You got to protect your whole entire group, bro. You, you, you put yeah. a lot of strain on yourself mentally. You know what I mean? So. A lot of that stuff played a part, and don't get me wrong, bro. Trust me, I sit back sometimes and I miss it. I do miss the yeah. the camaraderie part. Now I don't miss the game, right. the anxiety no. on that part. You know what I mean? Because, bro, I was a soldier, bro. I I, I believe I truly gave my all. You know what I mean? But that no stuff, like how we're doing right here, how we could just sit where we at. We, we're forty five minutes into the bro. I Four. feel like I just caught you. I know, and that's why I was just like, man, we're gonna I feel keep like rolling. And you enough, got you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to get you I, our, our content. You know what I mean? Like hell, I, <laughs> like. I could go all day with my dog. See, you know I mean? you like, were real, right. but that's how it is, though. So yeah, it, it's bro. funny. DeMond Brown got up there right now. Al told his business. Yes, he did. You hear me, Al? No. Y'all know snitch. he's man, he a military cop. Yeah, they really tell. Yeah. <laughs> he really tell. He got to tell. <laughs> and what's funny, I've been telling Al I'm going to get him on, too. But you knew what? I couldn't have him on before oh, I had you. put him on before me? Man, I'd have called up there and canceled the show, man. I'd have did whatever, man. Yeah, man. You know, I wouldn't have let it go, bro. I was mad he at wouldn't have let. He's mad Is at it for what? Uh, yeah. Because, I uh, never mind. Yeah, yeah. 
bro, he hits me up. I'm getting on the jet ski with Jada and Marley down, bro. I'm like, bro, I'm at Mike's house. Meet me out there, bro. He gets there and moan. I totally forget he's coming. He's blowing me up for an hour. I'm outside. All right, all right, fine. I'll go home then. Now, bro, I, all I did was laugh at it. I'll go home then. I'm like, bro, this <laughs> no, <laughs> no, bro. He's I'm such a goof, man. I gotta hit him. Up, bro. I, gotta hit him up. I should have hit him back after that text, man. But you know, bro. I, yeah, I was hanging Just, out. You with your kids. That's what you tell. I'm with That's my what kids. I'm saying, bro. You know how the boat days get, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, gotta get you and the family got to get down here, though, bro. We got the distillery down here now, bro. I'm telling you now. Come on. Business is and we business we gonna we gonna definitely get to that too. AB, bro, business is booming. Business is booming. It's over here in uh at the liquor store I go to in Tennessee. I told you that. Okay, we're we gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. Okay, we're gonna get to it. With that being said, one thing, one thing that I, I'll say this. Um I don't know if I could have handled the injuries the way you yeah, did. I know. I, know. I, I, I ain't gonna say I wasn't built for because I'll say that because I ain't have to do it, right? I ain't have to do it. But I saw you with tubes coming out of your, your leg. Uh, you had the knee, you had all kind of stuff. What, what was the processes like? Man, honestly, bro, I, I, I used to sit back and think like, bro, why me? I used to tell why you that, man, like, bro, what the hell? Like how a person is so dedicated, like gives so much to the game, cares about everyone that's around him. Like, like why the, why the hell do I got to deal with this? Like the nine ankle surgeries to have the, the skin graft to, to blow my whole knee right before my contract year. You know what I mean? A yeah. lot of things played out. And people never, ever, like, know, like, the, the sacrifices, the, the amount of time and effort that you put in to come back to be, you know what, somewhat the same player. You know what I mean? I mean, I tore four ligaments in my, in my right in my fourth year, in, my, in one of my major years of my contract, you know what I mean, in my, in my, in my life. You know what I mean? So to come back from that, bro, I honestly got to give hands up to, you know, first of all, my surgeon. You know, I had yeah. Dr. Andrew for me, Dr. Anderson for my ankles, uh, and Dr. Bradley as well. You know what I mean? That hands down, them guys there are uh, in a uh, – yeah, Dr. Bradley. Up. So then, hands down, them guys right there, bro. I honestly have to say, like, I, without them and John Norwig and the staff that we have, bro, I would have yeah. never came back. Now that, yeah. that there, you have to have. You have to have the staff, the surgeons, all that. Now, secondly, you got to have the, the the person. The person has to be committed beyond belief because you, let alone just get the train for the NFL, the train for a professional sport, is one of the hardest things ever. To get yourself yeah. ready every single year to prepare the body. The, the eating, the amount of workout, the sleep, everything you have yeah. going on in your life to get ready. Now you got to add in uh, a rehab on a major, yeah. major injury. Not like not like you just got a, like a little cut. I'm talking about like you got to go to balancing every day, strengthening, then go out there and run totally different. Then you got to go out there with the team, run, do all the other stuff. And, bro, I was just – I honestly say, bro, like a lot of that stuff, I tell people all the time, like a lot of that stuff was luck too. Like just imagine someone else falls back into my knee again uh, whenever I'm coming off my first year. Like, bro, it's over with. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's why I absolutely. Like, bro. Yeah, it's a lot of commitment with them things, bro. And I, I you, you, bro, you're right, man. That, that, there was a lot of big sacrifice in my life, bro. And I, I once again, bro, I got to say this, bro. Thank you to all my doctors, John Norwood, bro. You are the man. I know you retired this year, bro. I sent him a yes, little video message too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, he, he, he was awesome, bro. My whole time there, so. No doubt about it, man. And and like I said, if, if you were to tell anybody, what's the separator from dudes, man? Because we get this question all the time. What's the NFL like? What's the 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 biggest separator? I tell people it's probably the mental side of it, 1, making it 1, in the NFL. What what's your take on it? I say mental too, because you expect mental. everyone you, you expect everyone in the NFL, bro, to work hard. It's like it's like, bro, yeah. you really gonna sell yourself short knowing there's thousands and thousands of players going out there to work hard. So it is the mental part to get to tell yourself you have a routine every single day that you can't skip anything. That when other people are going on vacations, bro, you're still there working out. And if you do go on a vacation, yep. your ass better be in that hotel gym working out, uh, running on a beach, yeah. doing something. Yeah, to, to, to take care of your body. You got to show that commitment, bro. And I think another thing that plays into it, bro, is your surroundings. It's the people that you yep. have around. If you don't have uh, a foundation of people that truly love sports and love, that want you to be successful, it ain't going to work. Yeah, all you'll have right. is people that slowing you down, bringing you down. Bring you uh, uh, bad vibes, bro, and you can never ever succeed from that, bro. You know how that is, bro. Like that's why you always see it sometimes where people will start off with a, a big group of friends, and the next thing you know, two years later, they have nobody around there playing the best ever. Yeah, and and that's how it kind of went too. I was heck working out with my wife and brother them. You feel me? My brother in law them because the circle gets smaller. It has because to, of the commitment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and, and to that point, though, uh, we had somebody ask earlier, man. Uh, this is from Robert Cotting, man. He asked this question. I thought it was pretty dope. Everybody always asked that. He said, hey, Marquise, wh- what, what was the hardest player you had to go against? I- I'll tell anybody. For me, probably was Gino or uh, Nada. That's what I always say. I always say hello to Nada. Y'all went against Gino a lot more because he played in the three technique. Yeah. But hello to Nada with the nose. He played the two eye. He played the, the shade. And, bro, I always tell, bro, to see a human that that damn big and that damn Yeah, like, go ahead. Bro, he was, yeah, bro, like the, the mother, like he was built the right way, bro. Everything was like solid on him, you know what I mean? And, he, and his game, bro, he could run block, he could pass block, he could take on the double team. And, bro, he yeah. was the type of player, bro, he he didn't talk shit, bro, but you you knew to bring it every single play. And that's what you, you were expecting about, bro. Yes, bro, and, and you appreciate that about his game, you know what I mean? So I'll probably say yeah. uh, him. I got to give a uh, 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 shout out to Sue. I like to Sue a lot. I thought Sue was a really good yeah. player. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Aaron Donald, obviously, bro. I mean, shit. The yeah. guys who stand out in the NFL, bro, the guys that they promote on defensive line are, are 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 usually the guys that are really good in the NFL. You know what I mean? They're that good. Yeah. I, mine was probably Geno. Malik Jackson, I thought was legit. Yeah, he I, was I, tall, too. I, long man, arms. Man, That's what fact, got I'm me. Taking, Malik, I'm taking you off the list, bro. I know you went to Tennessee, but you talk too much, dog. I'm taking you off the it, list, bro. I you, think that's you what got me. to be on the list, bro, but I got to take you off, bro. I ain't going to lie. Because he went to Tennessee? Yeah. That's all good. What, what, what about <laughs> your guy, though, from uh, that played for the Broncos? Uh, golly, the D-lineman. The, 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 uh, was it Wolf? Derrick Wolf, yeah. Oh, Derrick Wolf. Yeah, Derrick Wolf, man, shit. He hey. went to Florida? He, went he to did Florida. go to Florida, didn't he? No, no he went to... we beat him. Yeah, that's who I beat my last year at Florida. In the bowl That's game. what we was making That's a mockery what... of. Okay, okay, all right, all right, okay. I was, Darryl I thought I went to yeah, Florida, like, man. No, Derrick Dar- Wolf, no, so I've been, I've been whooping on Derrick Wolf since college, fellas. Yo. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, somebody asked this one right here, Brian. Hey, Mon Pounds, who was the funnest player you had to go up against? Anybody that cracked you up? You know, where I'm going Pac Man. As much oh. trash as he talked, I thought it was love at the end of the day. Say what you want yes. to about him. And it's trash talk. He ain't really talked to us like that because we was cool with him. But, like, everybody else on the field could get it, man. Pac-Man. Yeah, I, I, that's a good one. I like Pac-Man a lot. Dang. Boy, that, ooh. Okay. You know who I did like playing against? And it was more hmm. not just the, the trash talking. It was more how he played the game a little bit. It was Kiko Alonso. He was – Kiko, it, it, it was, really? Yeah, yeah mom, because it was with weird. With the Dolphins. Yeah, he played. Yeah, with the Dolphins and the Bills. It was weird with him because I just liked how he was more like a, uh, like a true linebacker. He yeah. never ever run from you. Like man, he that dude that hit you and after hit you, Arr! you know what I mean? Like he just had you out there. Like man, you know what, bro? I I fucked with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he played. <laughs> he played yeah. hard as hell, bro. Mike know him really well from playing with the Dolphins with him, bro. But he he, I honestly will say that, bro. Every time I played against him, bro, he was fun, bro. And uh, another one, I I, I would say. Uh, was Luke Keekley like the way he like Luke, the way he yep. played the game? You know what I mean? Oh my! Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, bro, he he made it fun to play against. Like he all, like you if you tried to cut him, he'll hurdle you sometimes. You know what I mean? And he'll try yep. like he, Smart. he joked around with you with the trash talk. You know what I'm saying? You respected that. Yeah, you know I mean, he he was one of the other players that I really enjoyed playing against. You know, so but uh, a lot I of the other was a mean player, bro. I, you know, unless you was on that type of vibe with me and caught me in some unique way, man, it was a lot of hatred. You know what I mean? Then, then yeah, after the game, yeah. I liked you, but yeah, yeah, you know how it was. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Still, still, Ali asked this one, man. Uh, shout out to him for. Uh, he said, "Do y'all have any stories of going against Cam in practice?" Cam, did we fight, did we let Cam me take this one. I think we jumped. Yeah, it was a lot of fights in practice, and it, yeah, it was mostly started. Yeah, we jumped. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we jumped this one it, was a year one or two for him it that he good. had to get jumped. Rookie yeah, year. It was his rookie yeah, year. Yeah, it was his rookie year. Remember, yeah, they were mad at us about it too. Man, he came in there with the extra stuff. You know how Cam is, all in your face, man, and all this stuff. Yeah, he do the the that, worst though. thing you yeah, can Cam, do I is put watch, Cam probably watching us live. Somebody going to tell him about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna yeah. Somebody going to tell him about it. And he hears, too. He going to hear everything. You hear me? Yo, that Cam, right there. This that, right here, stop all that, bro. You know that's the only way you get past us. Dude, that right there used to bother. I'm like, Cam, why are we doing this right now? Now, did we all get better? Yeah, we all got better. But that was the one thing about Cam. You just be like. better player. We had he him, did. Cam, Cam's a good, Cam's a good fucking player. <laughs> he a damn good player, okay? Like, I'm never taking that from him. But this is the thing, though, too. After his rookie year, we understood what he was going to do every single oh, yeah. day. Yeah, even though it was understood. 
Yeah, Cam was an asshole. Let's be honest. I mean, that's the best way. <laughs> And the, and the best way too is you had to match that, and yeah, and real, it was bro. it was respect at the end of the day, too, bro. He he was never a dude that uh, differed off into different things, bro. He was always the same. He probably still do yeah. his hell right now, and the oldest player on the team. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think this one's pretty dope right here. What was your welcome to the NFL moment? Mine happened in camp. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, that first day in pads when Kiesel got me, Hemp got me, Kirsty got me, Hokey Bro got me. I was like, what the hell is going on? That was my welcome to the NFL moment where I thought I had it all figured out. I what was you, what I was your remember mine? You don't remember it, bro? Kuz used to replay it every single offseason. Oh, who was it? Was it Potsy? It was Go, uh, it was Go Kong. It was Go Kong for the uh, Cleveland Browns. It was he's, he's like, the, oh the, my gosh. Yeah, the little white linebacker, bro. I ran up on him, not thinking he was going to hit me hard, and he set me right on my ass. I'm like, I just, he, I, no, I thought like, he flipped you. He didn't flip you, did he? No, no, don't do that. Now, you know, he put me on my ass, but he ain't flipped me, Mo. He did not flip me. Like, yeah, yeah. I had to get stain on me too. I had to get grand stain. I'm like, oh, don't do me like that, go calm. Yeah, he got good too, bro. Remember, too, he used to always play that. I'm like, yeah. oh, so embarrassing, bro. But yeah, bro, because he, 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 everyone has their moments, bro. I'm telling you, if you think you that tough of a player, you will get, you yeah. will get it eventually, for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it, it, man. That was the most embarrassing thing. They played that all the way to uh, maybe to uh, to uh, uh, to much came, huh? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You remember that? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. That you was injured that year, right there. Though I don't even want to go down that route because culture matters. That's what I'm gonna say. Go ahead. You you can touch on it if you want to, but coaching matters. I will say this though. I will say I will go get a uh, a beer with Jack Bicknell anywhere. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. For sure. We'll leave it at that then, because that was a rough year. Leadership took over that year. That was a I, rough I, year. And I think, I think, I think Jack was in a tough spot too. You know, what I mean, he tried to come. We didn't have a. a he came from the stretch zone uh, with uh, uh, Charles, right? With the, the kick, kick. Sure did. Yup. And Le'Veon wasn't that running. You know what I mean? So we, we he overly drilled that stuff. So I think that, and you know how we were, bro. We were some assholes. You know what I mean? Let's be honest. We were. <laughs> Yeah, once once they once they got out our groove with our double play and our power play, it was like heck no, nah, man. We don't like this. <laughs> yep. No doubt about it. It's, it's, that's the thing about it though, too. Like you had to have some edge. You had to be a little bit of an asshole out there because you know, we demanded respect that oh, we was gonna take it. No, you know how bro, we bro, that's the, in practice, bro. It was so intense and so fun, bro. Our trash talking wasn't in a hatred way, it was to get us going all the time. It was seven sides, it was goal line. A team run. I will say defense cheated a team run because they knew it was a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we still handle business. We still handle business. With, with this being said, so we had Blake. Blake's been asking this question a few for a while now, man. You, I'm gonna let you answer. You go, hey, moan and pounce. We used to hear Ben say a little space pounce. What did that mean? Oh, so he, he right before I snapped the ball to him, that was on our quick uh, set hut. You know what I mean? So he always wanted a little space in between that. You know what I mean? But. I'm telling y'all, that's what how unique it is with Big Ben. Like people under appreciate the things that he did before every single snap, a pounce snap first. He had to tell every single receiver what route to run, or you know, yeah. I mean, he's out there hey, just like you said, hey, a, 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 a little before, a little you know spacing, I mean? a little spacing before. You know, what I mean, all, all the craziest stuff he used to say, bro. Like, man, all, all, all the hots on this, be alert on this. Hey, make sure you look if he does this. If he does, this. remember how he used to draw on his hand? Hey, lady, I yeah. this way. Hey, go this way. You know what I mean? It would be, it'd be like, bro, what the hell? Like, how the hell is he thinking about this right now? You know what I mean? And then go out so, there and then call the play. And that, that's and I ain't going to say we didn't get comfortable at all, but it was the understanding of where we were as a team when we had seven and when we had you and seven. So I'll, I'll give you that one moment of him drawing up something on the fly. We were in Seattle. I think you were injured then. Cody Wallace was in. D'Angelo was there. D'Angelo Williams. And he's telling D. Will, hey, D. Will. Like he's hey in here, like he's telling the defense what the route was. But Ben was such a screw you type of quarterback because he knew he was that good with telling the guys, hey, do this, you do this, mm -hmm. hey, O line, uh, empty protection, and that just be it. No, and he wouldn't even give a damn. Y'all, hey, slow that love. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. He, bro. he didn't care, bro. Like that's not good. He would, man. I, 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 bro, I can't say enough about Big Ben, bro. We got very, very lucky and blessed to play with a player like that, bro. Like you know it, man. And, and, and I did. see that, people that, that, not even that, bro. Just how just just how much of a competitor and how good he was outside of football. Everything he did, bro. I, that's why I tell people sometimes, bro, when you have the it factor as a player, it's just like when you watch Aaron Rodgers or or, or Manning, they all do it. Like go play in the golf tournament, Mr. Brady's the, the, the first, Brady throws a got a damn Super Bowl trophy across <laughs> the damn water and the man catches it. 
You know if that's yeah. anybody else, the damn trophy's going in the water, and so is the man. You know what I mean? Like, let's be serious. You know I mean? Like, some things just happen to guys who got the it factor, bro. <laughs> no doubt. So, and, and that's what I was explaining to people too. We're talking about this transition from from Kenny Pickett to, I mean, Ben to Kenny Pickett. Like, that's those are some big shoes to fill because yeah. everybody's had that blanket in Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. And that yeah. blanket has been Ben. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and what we, was it like the last couple of years? We have. Yeah, we, we have. And what was it like, though, for you? I know how it was for me, and I've explained it. Like, walking into the stadium, knowing you got him. Bro, I, I knew for a fact we were going to win every game. I never even questioned yeah. it until we got to the fourth quarter, and maybe we was getting blown out or something. But, like, man, when you seen Big Ben come to that locker room or run out that stadium as a Hall of Famer in the locker room, like, oh, and other players might not admit it. But trust me, man, you look for the great players on the team. You do. like, okay, he ready. Long as you see yeah. your dog already, like, man, you know what? I used to look at you. I used to look at Kimiatu sometimes. Kimiatu was another good one, bro. That big Uso, the Samoans, brother, yep. son, the back of dog. Bro, they, they go to hitting them hands together and just like, man, all right, it is what it is. Not like, he done locked me in. If he ready to die yeah. for it, I'm ready to die for it. You know what I mean? That's the type of pot dog was another player that came over there, got the whole damn team hyped up. Like, man, some players just got it in them. You know what I mean? Like, look at Mo, for the last four years, you broke down the whole entire team. Bro, yeah, they don't let just anybody do that in Pittsburgh. Like, let's be serious. You know what I mean, so, <laughs> TJ so, Watt does it now. So that tells you anything. To anybody who's listening to this, TJ Watt breaks the team down now. So, did not know that. Um, by by the way, um, you, no, you were talking last year. Oh yeah, he you weren't was. there last year. I'm no, sure. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Your last year. Damn. Your last year. I said all last okay. Year. It yeah, like it. <laughs> uh, so it did. I was there with you. I was watching every game. I promise you that. Uh, uh, I know you don't think about it, or or you play good. I knew I knew you was probably on your way out. I know. <laughs> yeah, hey, cut the show. Cut the show. <laughs> I'm not lying. Not that you were you down. I, I talk, you know, you my dog. I'd have told you from day one. Yeah, that, uh, uh, yeah. Not that you was down, but then in the aspect of like, I knew it was I changing. Same, I ain't had the same juice, man. I ain't gonna sit here and lie to you, bro. You you I know was, it. I would I would pounce. I want pounce. <laughs> took the why off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it took the why off. Did you do you think about um you think about Canton? Hell no. You don't. No. You think okay, let me ask you this then. Then you're probably gonna say no anyway. I'm gonna tell you, yeah. I think you're gonna get in. No. You got uh-huh. you got one of the best shots. Of, of, at, at that position uh-huh. with how the game is now, how you played it. Pounce, you got the you got the hardware, the accolades with that hardware. You got the time, you got the dynamic plays, and you play for the Steelers. Because I've seen that come, and all I'm telling you is this: I don't know who christening you in, but I'm gonna be there, and I'm first two rows, just so you know. No, if you have it, bro. If, if that happens, trust me, you, you you standing next to me out there. But I'm just first saying, bro. Th- honestly, bro, you know, I'm telling you, you've been around me a long time, bro. I don't care. Like, I, I truly yeah. know, bro. Like, my, my no accolades in life, bro, I, I've already, I, I feel like I, I, I accomplished so much in my life. And now, bro, my biggest thing is being a dad, bro. Like, I honestly That's take a lot of pride in that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, bro, like, football was a great part of my life, bro. And I appreciate everything it's done for me. You know what I mean? But, like, my life now, bro, I can promise you and I can honestly tell you, like, bro, I'm on to something way bigger. I told you about the foundation thing we're doing for the yeah. high schools and the, and the universities. I know I was going to be able to say a little bit on here about it, but. No, we're going to go ahead and go into it. I, mean, I, I had one more transition question. Yeah, yeah. We're going to roll nah, nah, into nah, that. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah we're going to roll no, into my, that. My, my life so, so much like it's so far past that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I appreciate yeah. it now. When I see it now, I laugh how big I was back then, bro. I'm down 70 yeah. years then, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even look like the same person then. But uh, yeah. I will say, bro, all that stuff is, is, is made me to who I am now. You know what I mean? Right. Like, trust me, I, I I I don't even think about football on Sundays unless, like, we go to, like, a tailgate and, like, the Dolphins invite Mike back or something. I did tell Mr. Rooney, and, uh, I mean, uh, Omar, uh, Coach Tom, that I would uh, come back this year. So, I am going to try to pick a yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to – They've been asking I me actually hadn't been to one yet. Yeah, yeah so, so we're going to have to make that happen. Let's take, let's take the kids and stuff, bro, so I ain't got to be able to – Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> <For real>. <laughs> <laughs> let's, no, seriously, let's plan it. Let's make that happen, yeah. man. Let's do that, bro. Um, do some, uh, this has popped up numerous times. I'm going to be real with you. This is me being a stiller, a retired stiller, because Jack Kearney told us we're not supposed to say former because you never former. You retire. Never former. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Never former. I, damn, I like that. Boy, you see why the stillers are so what, great? You see what I'm saying? I but that even, being yeah, said, 
Did you? I, I did. I'm going to say it. I felt a certain type of way whenever uh, they passed out your number so soon. Did did they ask you about Kendrick getting the number? You know what's so crazy? Like, yeah, the, uh, like they te- who texted me about it? Was it the equipment? Bro, someone texted me about it, and it was so funny to me, bro. Like, I, I, the first thing I said, I said, bro, y'all fucking serious? Like, you know how many numbers I had in my life? Bro, I was number nine for the Crystal Lake Panthers when I was a little kid. I wore number okay. 18 before because I thought I was Peyton Manning. Like, bro, numbers, What one thing I will say, bro, with numbers, they, they do carry a lot of memories. They do. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's that's different. one thing that I never, ever be taken from that. You know what I mean? Like, I, when I wore that number, there's so many different memories and so many different plays in that thing. Like, bro, it, you, it'll be almost selfish and, and crazy in my mind for them to keep retiring more and more numbers, especially at Lyman, bro. Like, let's right. be real, bro. Like, at some point, like, bro, it's only a, so, a certain amount of jersey numbers and football's not going away. So how many damn numbers mm-hmm. you gonna retire? Like it'd be players out there playing with 105, 115, you know what I mean? Like well, at some respect. point you keep retiring. I mean, for me, bro, I just appreciate it. And me, that was just a stamp on the game. And hell, it was yeah. just like, you know, it it, it, it was more than the name on the back of the jersey than the number, you know what I mean? And then yeah, so I I will say this because of those memories that you had in that jersey. Did you think it was a little unfair for how he was judged? Yeah. I mean, let's be real. That's he was light skinned like I, you. I more, I more hated it for him because they thought they wanted him to be me. And bro, Kendrick yes. is like, I, okay. I thought Kendrick was a really good, a good player. You know what I mean? Like he has, he needs time to develop. You know what I mean? He he, he was a little bit shorter. Obviously, he comes from a, a, a smaller school. You know what I mean? Sometimes guys need uh, guys need time to develop. And I hate sometimes when you throw guys in there and they don't develop as quickly, and you think they're not good players. Like how the hell did we draft him? Like you think that we seen something in him that 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 that, that, that still is still his organization? Like you know what I mean? They don't just draft anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be real. That was PC as hell from you, and I appreciate that, man. But that was some real stuff. But right that's there. how I feel about it, man. I, I promise okay. you, bro. You know how I am, bro. Like I honestly more care about the last name on the jersey than the number. Like hell, Mike was 53 too. If I cared that much about it, I'd be like, Mike, what the fuck you doing? Don't get 53 at the Chargers. <laughs> But your mama them cut that jersey in half and made one though. They did do that though. (laughs) That made it easy. Yeah, Yeah. 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 so funny. I forgot who just did. Oh, oh, yeah, Kelsey them did that, right? You know, yeah, they did. Talking about man, we I did that. I said, "Mom, sit your ass down." Like that's that's because your mama competitor though too. (laughs) This lady crazy. She is your mama competitor, man. So, pals, we we got through all of that, man. And now I got to ask my dog about retirement. One, I'll mm-hmm. be real with you. Whenever I had that phone call and I got off, I told my wife, I told Keisha, and I was like, God, I feel like I can breathe now. Did you immediately yeah. feel that? And what was, like, your mindset going into it? Because I retired going into the pandemic. You retired when things was kind of loosening up a little bit. Uh, h- how was the end of that call? Um, I didn't cry, but I was just like, dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was yours and what's retirement been like for for you? Bro, honestly, bro, I, I'm telling you, man, as soon as I talked to uh, Coach, Mr. Rooney, I was at peace with a lot of different things. You was at peace? Yeah, because, bro, you know how it is. Like, let's be real. At the end of the day, bro, he gives you the opportunity. I know the other coach yep. going there put it like a big name, but, like, he signs off on it for sure with the Steelers organization. I mean, especially that high of a draft pick. So I just felt like, bro, especially with him and his dad, like, you remember how I coached me and, him, him, me and his pops was, you know what I mean? So I felt like in my mind – that I owed them more. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, they bro, they gave me, you know, bro, they made me the highest paid center every single time. Like, bro, I just felt like I just, I had, I, it was, I had a responsibility to give them more. You know what I mean? So whenever yeah. he gave, gave me like the okay with it, it was just like, man, you know what, bro? Like, all right, man, I, that, that just gave everything else like a peace of mind. And I just got happy. I just knew that I was going to yeah. be around Jada a lot more. I was going to be around Marley, my other kids, and like, just be around the family a lot more. You know, like, some of that stuff, like, bro, when the family travel, but my kids, I can probably, bro, but it, it's funny when I look at their passport sometimes. My kids have been more places outside of the country than I have. Just because yeah. I dedicated you, bro. Like, bro, I'm not doing none of that stuff. Like, y'all, man, listen, I love y'all to death. If y'all want to go outside the country, we can walk down to Fort Lauderdale Beach and do the same thing. But y'all want to go to uh, Costa Rica, uh, South Korea, you know what I mean? And I just want to go get in the hot tub at the damn uh, the Four Seasons right up the street. <laughs> <laughs> Train and go bro. to the Four Seasons. <laughs> For real. Yeah. But, bro, I just had a peace of mind, bro. Like, And I just felt I felt accomplished with a lot of things, bro. And then I was like, you know what? And I got to my first year, and I'm, I'm sitting there, bro. And I'm like, man, what the hell am I going to do? Like, the real estate yeah. stuff is sitting there a little bit. Uh, I, I can go tell people I got this uh, apartment complex or this this building, but it just got boring a little bit. 
the kids bro and I, yeah. it was so funny because you know you drop them off all the time and then they, they get to the point where they're like well damn like they, they don't want to be around you 24 7 you know what i mean now they want to go there <laughs> <laughs> you old <laughs> so, news now i'll tell you yeah bro so yeah so that kind of played into it but now bro I'm, I, I, bro I, our lacor business is taking off tremendously um, Tell us about that, man. What's the name of it? Yeah, Working they, so, it's, it's spreading out across the United States now in most yeah. resorts. Again, I told you, it's here in Tennessee, right down the street from me. I was going to buy a bottle. But I said, I know the doggone owner. Yeah, you got the plug. Yeah, I, I, I can send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's called J.F. Hayden. We're the only American craft liqueur company. Most other companies are in, uh, in Europe, outside the country. So that's a unique thing for us. But we started off with a mango flavor. Then we went to a citrus. Then we went to espresso, so the coffee, and now we have um, a lychee, which we have coming out next is key lime pie for the Key West area down there. But, um, bro, I'm just telling you right now, being in the liquor business and seeing how well it has done is unbelievable, bro. We got very, very lucky with the team we got down here. And I and I say luck, our team works really, really hard, bro. We got a great dist distro company with RNDC. But uh, our, our yeah. espresso martini, our lychee martinis have taken off tremendously. We took over the whole entire hard rock guitar uh, uh a casino. We have every single Carnival Cruise lines. I mean, we're in uh, accounts that bro, it blows my mind. Joe Stone Crab, uh, the Fountain Blue Pool, the uh, I, bro, so many the like, Grand Ole Opry in Tennessee. So since you're up that way, you know what I mean. Uh, big old, big old yeah. Red. That's one of our big accounts up there in Tennessee. So if you guys are there, check us out. Support us, bro. Obviously, it's been a blessing so far. The company has grown 350 percent over the last wow. year. I mean, so, yeah, we're in every single t uh, total wine, um, every single Publix liquor. So. The company's doing really, really well. But besides that, bro, we start. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did that. We got the, the real estate stuff that you've seen over the years. Obviously, we uh, uh Mulberry and uh, uh, the strip district down there, brand new building down there is fifty percent leased already. That's in Pittsburgh. You know, we we felt like we had to do something in Pittsburgh. The opportunity came up, and uh, that someone put like a hundred million dollars down there in the terminal thing down there. A whole bunch of tech stuff is going down there in the strip district. So the opportunity played itself out really, really well. And obviously, it was a great investment. So it's doing really well now. But um. Besides that, we got, might, uh, we're, we're starting a, a foundation. So for the university, we're doing a, a, a ed tech company. And uh, bro, it, it, the the amount of success that we have into this, obviously when some people think about it, sometimes I, it's me just saying it, it ain't just me. Obviously we're the right. name, the big names behind it, but we, we built out the organization with uh, the WOT group who started, uh, so WOT, they started out eight different schools throughout the United States of America. Um, we have uh, uh, Blau Little, who's been on the Wall Street, uh, who had a, 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 a nice little setup and foundation as, as far as some of our technology stuff that we've been working with. But um, we got some 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 big name people, bro, and uh, and uh, we got some big investments, bro. It's been happening really really well right now. I know I'm trying to like ease my way into saying some of the things because my group is mad. Because <laughs> you my dog, you know I tell you everything. Yeah. No Obviously, doubt. Um, yeah, yeah. So we got a lot of that good stuff going on right now. We're actually going to Gator Day uh, in Tallahassee uh, here, uh, here, uh, here, uh, the 12th, I think that is. And then we'll go to the Gator game right after that. But, uh, man, we got a lot of great things going on, man. It's crazy, man. My life has uh, it's been a lot busier now. I'm telling you, bro, I sit yeah. on phone calls from times and go to meetings and stuff, and my kids be laughing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm in school, too. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. You got to learn. But that's one thing I've always kind of told people. I'm going to put the name up. J.F. Hayden's, right? Liqueur. Yep, yep. Is, J.F. Hayden. Yep. J.F. America, Hayden's yep. liqueur. Yep. Yep. yep, America yep. Made, uh, backed by your guy Marquise and Mike Pouncey. Got to throw him in there, too. Uh, yep. with, with, with that being said, though, too, like, guys do have to be smart after the game. Got to make sure that they're on top of their stuff, too. And that's what, you've, uh, that's what you've done in your time. And I don't think enough guys get enough highlights in that type of stuff, though, Pounce, because all you hear is the doom and gloom guys are broke type of stuff. Yeah, because, Mo, you've seen it, though, Mo, like how our whole path was. Like, even up there in Pittsburgh, bro, I gave tickets to the uh, to the games uh, to have a car every single year. Like, bro, yeah. I was never the type of person that was, like, extra, extra flashy with spending my money on expensive uh, cars and things like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I had some nice things, and I had some fun because, obviously, I was blessed enough with contract-wise, you know what I mean? But I tell people all the time, I tell kids all the time, whenever I go back and get back, man, save your money. Your biggest yeah. asset right now is, is, and your biggest investment is you. Taking care of your body, making sure you're living right, making sure you're staying injury free, uh, free, building up your, your your wealth throughout your contracts throughout the years, and then and then you know what? <clears throat> maybe you get later on in your career and you start man taking some things in the off season. Maybe you have a really really good group who has a uh, uh, amount of success to where you can't turn down a deal, to where they're not gonna let you fail. You know what I mean? To where 
they have so much due diligence and put in it and they don't get all all the extra work into it that where they know this is like a, a great thing to do so me and mike actually do the lilac deal so we do the low income housing deals we do a lot more grants from the cities because <clears throat> our business partners out of columbus ohio uh brad DeHaze and mike schiff uh the, their reputations the, the the amount of connections they have throughout the city they actually give us buildings uh, sometimes that to do the historical build out so we have uh, the east market out there remember i told you out there in franklin in the county out there, they, they had a whole try. Yeah. Our county out there, we had the first liquor license there. We have 16 different leases. One of our big leases is uh, Columbus Brewery. So, but yeah, the, the, a lot of them things were granted. So, like that deal there, for example, that was a 31 million dollar deal. The, the, the city gave us 29 million. I mean, so wow, them type of thing. Yeah, that's why we try to tell people sometimes, like, bro, you really got to look into some of the investments that you do because you don't want to sign on debt. Obviously, as players, man, there's people out there, investors and companies. That are already going to do that stuff for you like man make sure yeah. you're ever investing in something make sure you get a pref on your money and don't just have your pref sitting in there make sure you're getting a yearly pref on it like you're sitting in the stock market if you give a million dollars to a, a, a deal man get a 10 percent pref make sure you're pref on that money and make sure if you're giving a million dollars or the trust me that's two million dollars you're giving away make sure that deal is outstanding like man a home run hitter but then also make sure you, that, that if someone's asking you for that type of money sale they can go to the bank the bank's gonna charge them yeah the bank's gonna 100%. charge them a yeah, so why don't you get your prep? And don't just ask for my money, and I'm going to take this money out of my account, put towards a deal, and you're not going to give me some off of it every single year. Because with real estate, it's going to take three to seven years most of the time for that stuff to be able to build out, to sell, to get it running fluently. Like, a lot of that stuff plays uh, a lot of stuff plays into the type of things. But, yeah, bro, I tell people all the time, get educated on them type of things. And that's what I tell people uh, that we didn't do sometimes. Like, that, that's what's not... Uh, taught enough in college and high school level, bro. And yes, I, sir. I hate to say that, bro, because there is this, it's such a checkbox system. And players and what uh, the universities will never ever understand, unless you have people who have true success, people who have ran businesses, and were athletes at your university, man, no matter who you bring in there, if you're not bringing them back, they're actually coming there and teaching and engaging with them kids, they'll never take it in. None of them. Well, no, 100%. Yeah, they're not hiring people that is... in there that they, have, they can't correlate to. You're making them, forcing them to go to meetings. Like it's almost like a joke at some point. Now you're giving them millions of dollars in NIL deals to say, you know what? We're teaching financial literacy. Well, let's look at the person who's actually teaching that. Let's look at what what, what degree that person has. Yep, one hundred percent pounce. Uh, and and that's the things. Like you say, you got to be around the right people that's gonna put you up on game about stuff like that. Uh, and also you got to be able to apply it to after you learn that type of stuff, pounce. You got to be on top of it, bro. I tell you, man, Mo, you, you know do. How we were, bro. People, bro, that's why we were so unique. When we talked, bro, we were aligning. We knew, we knew, we knew the ladies who were signing our checks. Ninety-five uh, yep. percent of the team didn't know it. Yep. Like, bro, 100%. you got to be on top of your business, bro. Like, you got to know everyone you're around, people you're working with. You always got to be calling, getting updates. If you're in the stock market, you already got to know the ten-year yield is going to come. You got to be able to withstand some of the other holdings that are in there. Like, bro, a lot of that stuff, bro. Like. You got to get educated on that. And I, I think that us as uh, the football organization and the sports organizations, we don't do a good enough job at it. And they're trying. Don't get me wrong. It's not right. a lot of time. And I think we got to figure out a different way of engaging with athletes, not just sending yeah. the person up there to say, oh, you know what? This person went to Harvard and uh, they know they know about stocks and bonds. Like, bro, right. we don't give a damn who that person is. Like, we want to see the people who had uh, the bad mistakes, the good mistakes, and we want to see the true yep. athletes who did it. Like, not not people y'all just hiring for a fifteen dollar, fifteen hundred dollar session. Like, that just blows my mind at some point. Like, but we'll give a player uh, ten million dollars in NIL deal, and they don't even know how to write a check. <laughs> exactly. I don't even don't even know what, how to keep it. What the, uh, the amount of taxes that come out of it? But what you, but yeah. the, the university keeps the, ta uh, the the university keeps their taxes until they have to file them, but the university doesn't file them for them. So. That's another thing too. Right. Like, man, most of these kids don't know how to go out there and file their taxes, bro. Like, it's crazy. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, what they yeah, got us for. We're actually in the works with some of that stuff. Now, I think that some universities are doing a great job at it, but some some universities need to hand it out and um, uh, some you know some guidance and that stuff. No doubt, pounds. Last one, I think, man. Unless we branch off of here, your AFC North hate. I always talk about how the <laughs> AFC North is different. Yeah. Bro, for real. Bro. What, what it, was it, it like? Oh, my God, bro. So that Ravens week, you already know. Ravens week was Ravens probably, week. especially when they, they had that defense, bro, that was probably the most intense. And then we built into the Bengals thing. You remember how the Bengals rivalry happened? We always treat the Browns like our little brothers. You know what I mean? We, 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 always. We, and still are. We've been real. Still are. Yeah, we put an arm on. You know how you take a picture, you got an arm on your dog, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, hey, whoever that uh, that tiger is this year, Miles coming now, dog. Hey, we done said it. We sparked it now. Uh, hey. Yeah, I, but it's Dan yeah. Moore, I think, man. I, I'm 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 still in on Dan Moore pounce. I'm gonna be real. Miles like Garrett there, but I'm. I like Dan. I, I do. Let me say, I, I like Dan Moore. Who is the Who is the kid that uh, hit the one kid uh, took up for uh, Pickett? Was it Daniels? No, it was James Daniels. Yep, it was. No, he, I'm just telling you right now. Me and James Daniels gonna go to the bar. Yeah, yeah and what y'all gonna do at the bar? We are gonna be bouncing people up out of there. <laughs> Get him up out of there. You see, hey, yeah. my dog did take off running though. He he must be used to running he, from cops. You see how he cleared it. He area. did. You I, know what? You talking about running? The... Took off running, but I could not stop laughing, bro. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> He, he had to get up out of there. You got to know when to leave, too. <laughs> he, he, he forgot the cameras out there, bro. You ain't running nowhere. <laughs> he did run. I forgot all about that. He done got a joke oh, for days. Oh, my funny, God. <laughs> hey, so, so, okay, all right. Let's go through the old line real quick. You like Dan Moore. You you Love think him. I know he had a rough early part of the season, but you said this earlier. Guys got to grow up though too in the O line. Like it takes time sometimes. With who? What with Dan Moore? You saying you like oh, him? Dan, he Dan, had a rough. No, no, no. Yeah, I thought you. I thought you were going to the next guy. No, 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 Dan no. Moore, no I, I was Dan just Moore, going. I was reiterating. I think, I think Dan Moore has a really good chance unless the Steelers draft a tackle. If they unless tackle, they draft you know, a tackle, yeah. If they draft a tackle for sure, that tackle is going to start, and then the, I. And then you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna make uh 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 Chooks and uh, the tackle compete for them positions the uh, the first round. Yep, 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 one hundred percent. And that's why I've been so they've heard two offensive linemen say this that's played in that building. I said I'm not out on Dan Moore because he was a rookie. Second year you learn and grow, and I think this third year is where he take a different step. Like it's like that sometimes. You came out dynamic, but when did you really become a pro? Pounce about year three to four. Year, year three to four. I thought year four was gonna be my best year, but I was playing so good, and I had the injury. Like, bro, that was my Dope. best camp. Like, I felt like I knew everything that was going on. You know what I mean? Like, you you feel like you're so adjusted to the game. Like, bro, I'm spot on with everything. Like, I'm an AA player now. Right there we and go. Like, and, okay, again, like bro, he's already done been through it now. So when he approaches it, he already knows what techniques work. He already know what guys are gonna do to him. Like as far as like how they rush him, how they bull rush him, things ain't gonna change. They're gonna see what's been what's good over him the last couple of years. You know what I mean? They're gonna go to that. So hopefully he's sitting at the house right now working on them type of things. Real shit. No doubt. And you said Isaac, you in on him? He didn't get signed that much money to be a backup. No, Isaac is a starting left guard. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I, I ain't about to play with you. <laughs> I am not about to play with you. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know I like to mess around. I like to play. I just got a text. Just... Hey, I just got a text. My guy at Orlando just bought five cases. It just came through. I just seen it. Yeah, it just came through. J. You see what I'm saying? Just like that. Um, mm -hmm. Center, Mason Cole. I thought he I stepped like up Mason as Cole. the vocal I, lead. I like, Mason. I like Yeah, I liked him before, uh, the, uh, before even he got drafted here. Okay. I mean, I got signed here. Got signed here. Yeah, yeah, got signed here. But I like him. Uh, like right him. guard James Daniels, you in on that? You like the fact that he ran to the fight? Yeah, I like that moment. But I, I, uh, James, he, I mean, you know, no, they, no they, sacks that, last that might, year. That, that might be a, a competition between him and Dotson, though. You know what I mean? Because you know how that gets, Mo. Not, not that. That that's more of the uh, of the of the money. Because the, the the guy who's more comfortable, the guy they just paid, they're, he, they're gonna let him play his most comfortable position. They're not gonna take yep. him out of his position he's comfortable at. Now yeah, he loves going. Hasn't, Dotson hasn't played up to, to where they don't they're not drafting uh, or signing for agents. You know what I mean? So now that you know how it is, but he's gonna make him compete. And he's gonna yeah, he that right guard spot. Now he's gonna get comfortable at a whole different side of the ball, you know what I mean? One hundred percent, and that's fair too because he's still he relatively played it too. new. He played it too, though. Remember, he came in for Dave. I actually thought he played good at right guard whenever he was in there with uh, for Dave for them games. Remember, we played the Eagles with him in he there. He sure did. Two different games with him. You know, I mean, he played really, really well. So, and and hey, we've always been a team that had a lot of depth. Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. The, the Steelers are always gonna keep that, bro. And offensive line play, bro. People might not know this or not, but bro, offensive line get hurt. I know people yeah, got to get out of the mindset, bro. Like we're playing in there, bro, with other big ass dudes. They're falling down on the ground. Yeah. Like some of that stuff is in, inevitable. In, in, inevitable, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna get hurt, bro. Like if a four, 350 pound man's falling on your ankle or right. your knee, like something's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So that's why I say you gotta have that. You gotta have guys in there. A sixth, seventh man on game day, bro. That's huge. A guy that can play all three positions on the inside and a, a swing tackle. Man, if you got that on your team and you feel like, man, you know what you're going to every single game with that, man, you know what? Offensive line don't worry about it because you got to get no the group. Doubt. The group got to somewhat figure it out during the game. You know what I mean, even if they play slow, you know how we did it sometimes, but we'll come out that bit and flatline the whole first quarter. 
second, third, fourth, man, we hit it right on. You know what I mean? It, it just was crazy sometimes. You'd be like, damn, like, man, how the hell this plan ain't working? It worked every day in practice. Right. And uh, Chooks, he was with us. I like Chooks, bro. I, I, and Chooks, I, bro, it was crazy because we we looked at Chooks as a, like uh, our, our era. And, I, and sometimes, yeah. bro, I'd be, I'd be hating that because you know how it was before us, bro. The era before us, they did uh, – I don't think they was as athletic as us, but they was they was just as crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did a lot of different things that we didn't like, when we came in that we didn't agree with. Remember uh, a times with like how you chop the, the arms down and that shit? I thought, yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Much hey, man, you gotta fight about that. Man, you put me out there with touch uh touch and that whip down on my, my damn forearm. I said, man, what the hell he's trying to do to me? Like, man, he on some jacket chair shit out here, man. Yeah. God rest his soul, man. What an amazing dude, but he let you I have it that day. At Mo, how tough were we at the Mo? We were and he hit me again with it. I said, Oh Lord, Lord, this hurts me. <laughs> I ain't know how you could do that, bro. Like when I tried to do it on him, it hurt my hands. <laughs> Those dudes were different back then, bro. They had a different type of like, our era wasn't like that, you know what I mean? Remember that? Man, no. we take his knee out right there. I'm like, God, you take his knee out. <laughs> like I feel somewhat bad if I took his knee out right there. <laughs> I know, freaking soldiers, man. God, freaking yeah, so that's what they were. The, yeah, we tried to change him into that like that crazy mentality we was on, bro. But Chooks was he had to grow into himself, bro. And I honestly feel like he bro, did. We, we liked the Chooks, like man. He came to game day when he came to game day. He went out there talking shit, but he accepted everything that came with it. You know what I mean? He no doubt about thing, it. You know what I, mean? so I, I think he had. He has a great opportunity, but you know how it is, bro. The NFL, the NFL, not for long. That truly means. Yeah, that. yeah. So, he gonna have to they, show him pro. He had a sweet bro, spot, bro, though. I, I thought, on your last year, bro. I, I thought they were gonna sign you back. You know me, bro. I went into like, yeah. bro, I need him. Like, what the hell y'all talking yeah. about? And when it didn't I, happen, I it know. Was like, okay, well, hold on. This, 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 how this shit really is. You know what I mean? Like, they, they can really do this shit. And then I seen it with my brother, bro. Me, yeah. Mike, Mike, make four Pro Bowls, bro. They like, like, they literally cut them for two players. And bro, we yeah. was in there. When I told you, we were sitting in there with uh, who, uh Adam Gase, and I, I told I felt like shit, bro, because I was kind of like teaching him like our uh, like our pass protection and shit, yeah, <laughs> like how we fit, you know. What I mean, when I tell you like our vertical sets, like why we're so stuff yep. and everything, like what like, the mentality of what we think of, and what the quarterback thinks, and then literally the next day he, he cut Mike, didn't call him or nothing. Wow. So I thought like, yeah, bro. So it's like it, you, you start to realize, bro, like bro, like they have a job too. And they, 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 they don't answer to other people, you know what I mean? And and sometimes that's why I try to tell people, like, that's why I, I became to the realization, like, bro, I ain't about to ever get mad when someone said I wasn't the same player. You know right. what I mean? Because, bro, like, like, at some point, bro, you're not. Like, you think, you're like, not. like, yeah, you're not, bro. Like, yeah. you know, at some point, I like, players that accept it. Like, and once you accept it, I honestly think you become a better player because you, you mm-hmm. play the game differently. Now, instead of you being a dickhead, and individual drills, me throwing the guy on the ground, like making sure I'm making sure I got all my shit going. I'm more teaching him while I'm doing it. Man, man, now hell, yep. put your hand here, you know what I mean? Like, hey, keep your head up, bro, because, hey, listen, I'm going to sling your ass down, you know what I mean? Shit like that. So uh, and- things like that played a totally different part in it as well as you get older, you know what I mean? So I think once I accepted that, because much pulled me in there, bro. It's crazy. I don't think I ever told you guys. But he was like, man, Pounce, uh, it's, that, it's that point. And, I, and I'm like, man, what the hell? Like, what you mean? They're like, it's that point where you got to start coaching the guys. Like, not, don't, oh, don't, did just, he? hell yeah. And it was like year seven or some shit. But he was like, man, just don't, don't, don't demoralize him. You know what I mean? Like, start coaching him. <laughs> Real shit, bro. You know how it was. But, but we went like, that hard, I, though. It was, more, it was more me, like, just getting ready for my stuff. And they, 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 trust me, they weren't like them dudes were bitching up. Them dudes were coming with it. You know what I mean? But I, in my mind, yeah. I wasn't doing the coaching part. Like, I'm like, yeah, after I get done, my work, yeah, yeah, you know what it is. Bring it in. Bring it in. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I'm going to end it right there, Pounce. <laughs> uh, no, nah, with this, with this last one, because everybody's looking Drive for this guy do, again. Dog. I know, and that's the thing. We could, but we we got to make sure it's cool, we can okay? Make this two, we can this, make this two episodes. Tell them to chop. We can it do up. a different episode because we'll talk about other stuff in that episode. We'll hit maybe the draft. Or something. Don't do matter. This. Yeah, y'all got to give my boy the raise though. If I come back, because I'm gonna bring Mike Pouncey next time. The top. Oh, we get a twofer. Yeah, the top fifty <laughs> dolphin great. Yeah, Let's I bring do it. what you want, bro. Yeah, I, 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 bro, you know I got the connection now. Nah. We're gonna have to hear it on some of them rainy stories on the next episode. With that, that's another yeah, see? Person, bro. And rainy, see? Me, bro. Rainy, rainy knows, bro. Y'all know, bro. Hey, gambling's real. Yeah, yeah. It's worse than any Let, type of drug you can ever take is losing it. With that being said, what was uh, how big was months for us? Months changed all our careers. He taught us. He taught it, us how to. 
how to think different as players. How sometimes, you yeah. know how, like, bro, we were so, like, aggressive on some things. Like, bro, like, we really didn't have to do it on certain things. And it, it made us not – when we was overly aggressive, it messed us up as a unit, you know what I mean? And he taught yeah. us how to, like, think together. Like, man, you know how, like, you would leave a hand out there for me. Even though that one your guy to block, it was more just the presence. You know what I mean? Like, you have yeah. a hand there, and the guy's mind is like, oh, they're double-teaming me. But you're really not, you know what I mean? And much taught us them different things about the game, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I say. He he prolonged all our careers for at least two he did. Years. Yeah, two to three years he, he prolonged it. And was, what was even better, he didn't coach not one person the same. No, nah, bro. I wasn't coached like Dave. I could DJ wasn't coached like you. You could, bro. You, you could grab anybody and hold them right there. I, bro, I can't. If I grab anybody like this, bro, I'm behind Ben. You know that. I gotta punch you, bro. I gotta get you up. <laughs> I gotta get you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And and that was just especially, and he highlighted that though too. And that's what what was so unique about like I see somebody said like cerebral warriors like. Munch was a mind games type of dude because he was an army type of guy too. Well, he loved what the military was about, and he treated us like that with just all mental stuff, dude. No, you remember that, bro? We we used to, bro. It was a, bro. We we would never come to the, the plane not dressed up because, bro, right. not not because of what anyone else would think, because what Munch would say. Real talk. <laughs> Real talk, bro. You're picking you from the bottom of a hamper, huh? His ass was gonna be on that plane before anybody. And you know you had to walk past him <laughs> to get the OC. <laughs> yeah. And he created that he standard of one. Suit, bro. Al used he to did. try to wear Crocs, bro, everywhere. And he had Al in the suit, bro. That's how that's how much respect we had for that man, bro. Like, real talk. And I was a damn warrior, bro. He went to three different tours over there in the Army. Real talk. Game Literally. Life and we had that much yeah. respect for that man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's why I just wanted to finish off with just like Munch because I I know he helped extend my career. We did the work, but he specialized in really picking out what no, we did was, well, he heart, man. He heart not asked about the techniques that he thought that we were good at. Remember the meetings that we used yeah. to have on the hard meetings where we had to go in there and watch our film, bro. He never had a good play on there. It was like the most right. like hard reality thing ever. Like, all right, so now what do you got to work on, shit? Because I got to work on everything. What you just showed yeah. me. Hell, I got to work on my, my run game, my pass game, my hand placement. Hell, my mentality. I got I got to think different on a day to day basis. And he just challenged you in that, bro. You just appreciate it because the way he did it. He made fun of everybody. Yeah. He treated yes, no one like did. a superstar. There was not one superstar in the building. Even Big Ben, he would joke with Big Ben. You know what I mean? Now I know the jokes yep. one that's crucial, but he joked with him. You know what I mean? So it was yeah, crazy yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But that's his thing, like though. Was, bro. Even Coach Tomlin when has you were... so much respect for months. He, he didn't. He just let us do our thing, like munching, mm -hmm. munching his guys. That's the way it was, man. <laughs> yeah, the, Such laughers. A, the laughers. The laughers. That's what we were. The Goons laughers. and the laughers. As you see, that's how we do it <laughs> now. The laughers, yeah. Crazy. Yes, well, pounce, my dog, man. I love you, dude. Like a brother. You, you go. You gonna tell me, Mo? You are my brother, and that's how it is, too, man. Uh, appreciate your time. We are gonna do this again soon. Anytime. Because they want to know how the kids they, doing, bro. Peace you good. Everybody good, good man. Right? Man, Keisha's good. We actually got date night in a little bit, man. We're gonna go to this magic uh trick date night place, man. We were gonna do axe throwing. I you know I gotta make sure my fingers is all together. Hey, Keisha, if you up. listen to this, get them all baked food. He just told me you right over there. Get them all baked all right. food. I know how you trust over there. I'm gonna show you. Yeah. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Uh with that being <laughs> said, you, come on now, you know the vibes. You also, you always know the vibes. We can always hold it accountable. Mom, you they feel be so mad at me now. I be cheating like a mother. They be walking in on me cheating on the snacks. I be like, man, y'all <laughs> get out them damn kids snacks, man. <laughs> 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 hey, My kids you know, too, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, <laughs> no oh, doubt, man. dude. My God, we go, we gonna do this again. I, my kids got the personality, bro. I got lucky, bro. But yeah, bro, I love you to death, bro. You know you're a brother, Same. bro. I look up to you, my dog. And I'm so proud hey, that you're still doing your thing, bro. Real talk. Appreciate that. No doubt, Real man. Talk. You, you hey, give my boy a raise. Without Ramon, y'all telling y'all, that man there has a personality, bro. He can outbuild anything, bro. Real talk, man. No, I appreciate that, man. Uh, by hey, the way, my... Ma... Come on, guys, Mo. How about me and Ben do a duet You know there? what I'm thinking? Like, uh... So let, I'm going to go ahead and say it so we can go on planet. Me, you, Al... Dave, Ben, and if we can pull Gil out of his cave, that's gonna be a dope episode. Oh, we can easily do that. He owes, matter of fact, he owes uh Al a favor because Al went to his birthday party down here. Oh, okay. I didn't go. I missed it, man. I, I was I was working, bro. It's always. I, told him I, was I mean, through. but I support. I supported this girl in her race. 
for the yeah. for the for the, yeah, for the yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, so you I, did. Bro, I saw love. Give no, I love. Give my give my it's, love, bro. Give my love, bro. If he I stopped love. changing his number. He did now. He married now. He married. Yeah. Okay. Right, we are gonna leave it alone then. Say yeah. less. We're say, hey, matter of fact, we'll say that for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> the last first pounce, man. We uh, I appreciate the time Love so much. Hey, rate runner. This gonna be the best show. The highest numbers. I guarantee it. And I'm we a rate runner. Double off. <laughs>